Well now, well, well, well. Look what we have here, guys. It's a tea time. No, and there are no recommended fractals. We have, there are two things we don't have. We don't have recommended fractals and we don't have <sighs> MMO inks, okay? So there you go, mm. that's, that's the Unlucky. situation here. But, Unlucky. what are we here to talk about? Well, well, there has been a fairly significant patch, actually. Okay, some things have happened. And the, the major one is to do with balance, guys. You know, we do get the occasional balance patch in this game, and this is no exception. And you know what? Arena Network, they were just they were just bored. Okay, they were bored, so they said, you know what? We're just gonna make yeah. we're just gonna power creep the game a little bit real quick. Well, you know, gonna... They've been working hard, they wanted to take a break. Yeah. Wait, what? Wow. Wait, what are you trying to say? I think these changes are actually really cool. So I guess yeah, I do. Yeah. Let's let's just kinda of start with this. Uh, what what are the general general feelings and thoughts on this uh on this balance patch from from you guys' perspective? It's great. Yeah, I, I like it. I like it a lot. I've been from, waiting from for a novelty PvP, update think. for six years. Yeah, a novelty <laughs> update. So, I, I, yeah, I, that's kind of cool. Though. You know, I, I like this. Yeah. I like this. So I think we. I can. I can see two different perspectives emerging here. I think uh, Roy may think this is a bit of a mega meme novelty patch, I and I think. Fine. And I think that's because he plays World vs. World. Okay, I can imagine uh, some stuff. Yeah, in I'm jealous. In, in, we, can't, in... we can't use it in World vs. World. So. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, but Rocker. Actually, so yeah. what's uh? So from from your perspective, I believe from a bit of a Weaver perspective, actually. Yeah, okay. I love it. I love it. How are you feeling? I love it big time. I thought it was like it actually like. I mean, you may have noticed that I wasn't as active the last couple of months, but I'm actually really active again because of it. Like this pet really did some good stuff for me. Yeah, like and Weaver. I, I haven't had this much fun on Weaver since probably Fresh Air Tempest times. Um. So yeah, I I think it's really good. Salt Weaver is is a big pock gem for me. Yeah. What did they really What do they buff on Weaver or change on Weaver? What? <clears throat> So they, basically what they did is they um they changed the air trade line and uh and and generally some some stuff about air. So maybe to to get some background, people used to play only Arcane on Weaver for the last couple of months at this point. Uh because Arcane had a trait that would give you 2% damage per boon that you have, right? That's also why like things like Chaos Chrono became so busted and like boon stacking became so so strong. Um and nobody ran air anymore. Um, and they actually changed some air traits to be really useful. And they changed some uh, some some skills about it. It's, it's really good. Actually, if you look at the um, uh, changes, I'm looking at the updates right now. Um, oh, they changed uh, precision as well and changed it into ferocity. And you, basically, you get a lot of ferocity now when you go into air. Um, yeah, and that resulted in like a really cool sword weaver rotation that focuses on air rather than earth. I think that's a great change. That's a really cool change. Yeah, I th and I think. Yeah. Well, I was going to go say that one of the things that they they did in this patch is they kind of like buffed the core Ellie, right? They buffed like the core specs as opposed to just changing the elite specs, which is something that's been that's been something that needed to happen for a while, I think, or well, certainly be very much requested, right? They buffed they buffed Weaver as well, Sword in particular for PVE, mm -hmm. but they also they really added a lot of extra damage to Air, for example. They really made Air considerably better and, and tried to buff some of the other trait lines as well. And I uh, really like this because it shows that they like they they saw some of the issues with Ellie, and that is that Ellie had actually kind of turned to this class that just rotated between Fire and Earth after the recent um, um, changes to the Glyph. Um, and people barely went into air anymore, and it kind of became really insignificant. And they actually like saw that there was this was going on basically that both the air trade line and the um, air attunement weren't really worth going into anymore. And they fixed it. They adjusted it. Hey, uh, Raka, I just want to say you have some beautiful blue eyes. Oh, <laughs> I like your haircut. Okay, thanks. Okay, well, let's yeah, do okay. some dungeons sometime. Yeah. Oh. Oh, you can do it on that sword weaver as well, right? I mean, that would be Ooh, pretty good. That's right. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Ooh, yeah. Uh, it's it's certainly a, a good change. It's a shame. It, and they did try and um, address some other issues on on Ellie uh, in the other game as well. They with these auras. These uh, this is such a cool change. Actually, uh, th this is this is the patch of of cool little design changes, which is why I really like this patch a lot. Um, so if you get an aura now, if you have an aura skill corresponding to that aura. You can kind of convert it. You you can detonate the aura, and it will do, it will do a cool effect, like a fire aura will do some AOE burning, a well, lightning aura will do AOE stun, water aura, what, will, a frost aura will do AOE heal. It's really cool. I really like when it. When I read that, I thought it would be really cool, but then I kind of saw how it was implemented in the game, and it's actually just specific weapon skills that change as you have an aura. Yeah. 
And like when I read it, I thought that would be like some really cool effect that like basically you can spam auras and, and spam the active effects as well. And that would like make aura mansa really good. Um, and then as I saw it in the game, it felt like it was actually really insignificant. Like there's very few, like they're also like spread out among different weapon sets. So for example, mm. if you run staff, you just kind of have the Only earth one. And, um, and I don't know. I don't know if, I felt like they were experimenting a little bit, like they were with Meteor Shower at first, you know? Like they were looking at ways on how to make auras more interesting. Um, and I'm I'm kind of hoping that's what they're doing. I'm kind of hoping that they're actually like playing around with auras and that there's something that will follow this up. Because it doesn't feel as significant in the game as it felt in the when I read the patch note. Yeah, that's true. It's certainly a bit difficult to get value out of it especially when you well if you play tempest right you you can't um if, if they made it so you could detonate your utility skills as well yeah that would be pretty interesting i think that would be a lot better it's certainly a step in the right direction though i really love the yeah. design I, I think the design is so cool um really really awesome and yeah, they're even trying to experiment a little bit with like having some trait interaction there as well so you detonate if you have there's a trait in fire that if you detonate the an aura it removes two conditions from uh from nearby allies i think yeah that's that's, 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 that's pretty cool that's pretty cool uh, i really cool, really so. love i really love the design uh changes here but uh i don't think tempest in general i mean it, it obviously in pve it's completely fine right like heal tempest is a very strong build and of course it sees play yeah that. it sees play in world versus what as well and i well this is going to be a, like a very a very well fairly sm uh, minor buff to this of course uh, and and Scepter Warhorn also playable again, right? Yeah, and in like, PvE you can play Scepter. Yeah, he can play. You can play Scepter Warhorn. Not in World vs. World. In, 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 yeah. in PvE, yeah, not, yeah, not in, well, yeah, in that, PvE. Yeah, but, <laughs> like I saw a benchmark for it. I know a lot of people are happy about that one. I know a lot of like Scepter Warhorn was one of the favorites. Mm. I think in the community. Yeah. So, is Staff Weaver now better to run than? Uh, sorry, uh, Sword Weaver better to run than Staff now? Yeah, yeah, yeah in a lot oh. of situations, yeah. I, think, I, think well, I mean, there are still some edge, situations right? yeah. it, it, where, where sword can really kind of fuck you up, but mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't. Oh, it's, it's, nice, it's nice to have something different. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it is really good to have some variety. Uh, but um, yeah, I was kind of thinking like, well, this is this is where you know, what, what do you think about this, Naro? So, so obviously, like now, PvP is very much dominated in the support front by the Firebrand. Do you think the the, mm -hmm. the the Tempest is a bit closer to making a bit of a bit of a comeback with this kind of design change? regards to the support class or is it does it still need more work i'm trying to say here i would say that they'd need to nerf firebrand more than buff tempest for for that to happen i don't it's firebrand's I, just it's easy it's just too easy access to like everything you, you press your f35 you get like aegis stab the buff prot for like, like it's just too easy Same with your really F2. strong but i mean i think especially with the last patch there's so much damage in pvp now I mean, Firebrands can get one shot, honestly. And it's not just if they're bad. I mean, Reaper does so much damage. Yeah, yeah, that's and, that's a uh, one good thing or, about Reaper. I mean, you see a lot more core guards now, uh, which do a lot of burst damage. See, I mean, Revenants, there's a lot more Revenants running around. Although I don't necessarily think the Revenant changes were that good. Certainly not the F2 change. Uh, I mean, Soul Beast doesn't come You don't come like that change? The F2, no. Um, I think the traits are okay, although some of the traits are garbage, but uh, they don't really affect the class that much. I don't really think it changes Rev at all. I just think the F2 is bad, the new F2. I, um, for I, I think it's a, lot, I mean, it's a little bit better, because you kind of have to like think about when you have yeah. to use it. I'm not, uh, I'm not complaining about the amount of damage in PvP, by the way. I, I much prefer it over like a bunker meta or something. But um, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't know if nerfing Firebrand is going to... Think, I think if you nerf Firebrand, you're not going to see any like supports... Well, um, I mean, obviously, um, you'd have like, to um, you'd have to put damage in line as well. Yeah. Or I mean, I I would I'd damage. rather have two supports than only one, but I just I don't know. It, I think I think you have to be really careful about nerfing Firebrand because it's going to it's going to make I mean it, it'll affect World of World and PvP the same where you only have uh, <laughs> where you have I mean it's like your main support right in both game modes and it's it's the it's like the biggest reason that damage is sort of in check in both the game modes. And if you nerf it, then it's going to sort of allow people to run amok in a way, I'd say. Um, I mean, in ranked games, it might not matter as much because you kind of can run that firebrand anyways. But in World vs. World especially, I think it would just encourage like really uh, unfun play. Do, do you think they could skill split World vs. World and PvP? Because I've noticed in this patch, I don't know if they will. But... I think this was like the first time I've seen this, that they've actually balanced the skill differently for PvP and World vs. World. I don't know which one it was. I don't think it was any, anything big significant, but um, I think there was one thing that got changed that like, 
it just kind of struck me that I've never really seen a skill that was split between the two competitive game modes, you know? Well, they, they did a lot of skill splits, not this most recent patch, and I don't even know if it was the one before it either, but a couple patches ago, they did a ton of skill splitting. And I mean, there was like a patch that was essentially just skill splitting. They weren't. Oh, and yeah, then another, yeah, yeah. And then there was another patch where they sort of brought everything in the same. And they did the same thing with um, Guardians and Power in this last patch. Uh, so now the Empower in World vs. World uses the same uh, the healing same modifier. Numbers. Yeah. Uh, which is, I mean, it's a buff. Obviously, it's a buff, which is which is nice, I guess, because Firebrand needed buffs, apparently. Yeah, I don't know why um, that was different. <laughs> Should have just been uh, the but same thing. <laughs> I, I feel like a lot of times they skill split for one patch, and then they sort of bring them together the next patch, which is kind of strange um, in some cases. But I don't know. I mean, I, I like most of the staff changes to Guardian this patch. I don't really like the staff one auto attack for World vs. World. For PvP, it's fine. Um, the staff two is awesome. Obviously, yeah. empowering yeah, buff is great, yeah. but looks really I mean, the cool. staff too is, is amazing. It's like it's like my favorite skill in the game it, now. It looks so good. <laughs> it, it really Holy is. Strike is such a cool name. It's a blast finisher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and it's, it's someone's nice. giant beam of light down from yeah. the sky as well. It's, really, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's really, really, really great. I'm really, I, it's I'm really good. About that skill. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm definitely. Yeah, overall, I definitely say the changes to to uh, staff on Guardian are really cool. Yeah. Uh, the the auto attack is, I think that's going to be. A, I think some people are going to like it. Some people are going to like go, "What the fuck is this? Where's my cool?" You know, it's kind of loot weird. Wave. Uh, Plus, the, you just gotta is... get used to it, and it's really good because it's yeah. so fast and it's AOE. I think I think the misconception is that because it's like one or people think it only hits one person, mm. but it, it hits explodes. one and then it explodes yeah. around, so yeah. it's actually tagging more. Um, it's kind of than the old one because the old one you had to actually be in someone's face to even hit them yeah. right mm, but this yeah. one is not the case you just keep shooting it it's really quick yeah so, so uh, I, I like the change i think it's probably i i'd say would you say it's more of a pvp focus change rather than any other game mode they're trying to make yeah. um drink yeah, make the pressure of of guardian a bit more significant i don't know i don't know if i i think maybe they just wanted to change it because like i think they probably thought and they would be right that wave of wrath essentially did nothing especially at 300 range um, in any game mode. And I don't know if it was necessarily PvP focused because, and again, like, I guess in PvP, it's sort of a little bit more useful. In World vs. World, it's essentially, it doesn't matter. Um, like, you're not doing damage on Guardian in the first place. You should almost never be in your weapons until you run out of tomes anyways. I mean, for like a second or two. But you're not going to be auto-attacking in World vs. World on Guardian. So... No, I always you know, found those, I think it's uh... kind of irrelevant. I found old really stuff cool. kind of kind of boring to be honest. I found it kind no. of unimaginative. It was no. just like Sunset Range, Rave of that... Wrath was the best thing in the world. And yeah, the, yeah, the, I, the orb, I felt yeah. like it felt really clunky. The orb felt really clunky. Like, I mean, I I, I don't play World vs. World that much, and I only played Guardian there for a little while. But it that's just my feeling from a um, beginner's perspective, I guess. And I I found the orb especially the staff too was very weird mm. before. Yeah, it was a bit clunky to use. It was a little bit yeah, weird it to had, use. It had really bad. A lot of so obviously double tapping the old orb was the, the best way to, way to go yeah, about it. Yeah. You don't, I mean, yeah, support, that's what, right? that's what so I did. I just never really. A lot really of times, it. it you had to you had to spam the two really really hard because mm -hmm. a lot of times it wouldn't it wouldn't pop. Um, and there were like there were bugs with it where it would even if you, if you didn't pop it, it would go on full cooldown or something, or it'd bug out and it wouldn't go on cooldown until you popped it. So like you'd have your orb two up for like on on the the second part of it, whatever it was, the second chain for like twenty seconds. So it was it was definitely not a very good skill. I mean, the skill itself was fine, but the you know the way it worked, the it was very clunky, as Steve said. So it's yeah, especially the healing aspect. It's just so much fun. It's, it's a much better skill. You can now blast three smokes. It's sick. But uh, it's uh, no, it's it's a good skill. I like the change. Staff one is whatever power. But I mean, overall, I just I don't. I mean, it wasn't like a buff to Firebrand in the sense that like it now made Firebrand even better. It didn't really change anything. It's just that. I mean, as Nara says, it, fire range should be toned down for sure. It's it's way too strong. Um, you, I mean, again, you have to be careful how you do it. You don't want to nerf it into the point where it's not usable other than just stability. Uh, because, again, it's just going to make World vs. World really, really unfun. And PvP would... I mean, maybe maybe it wouldn't be a bad thing for PvP, but it would just... I think you wouldn't see Firebrand used at all. I it's already it bad in ranked. I think that's why they're scared yeah. of nerfing it. Because even right mm -hmm. now, like Firebrand yeah. is one of the most like busted things. But the thing is, it's support and has no carry potential in like solo duos. Mm -hmm. And so, it it can get yeah. bursted down very fast. It really can. Yeah, especially yeah. when you don't have a team like built around it, then yeah. it becomes worse. So that's one of the things. But when you have a team built around it, it is the most oh, broken sure, yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's kind of the issue that we were discussing earlier, right? Like if 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 it gets nerfed, then it. As as Roy said, it allows for like run amok, right? Like if people just to go crazy, 
like the anchor yeah. of firebrand keeping all the all the crazy Which, damage and shit again i i think that would be kind of interesting to see in pvp but world this world it would just make everyone pirate ship and be yeah. awful that would be yeah that would be amazing that'd be great fun no okay? imagine sure. with no stability no stability in world versus world well. yeah. that would be oh mm, that'd be great it would be, <laughs> be no problem there of course uh, they they still didn't nerf bubble unfortunately yeah that was lucky that's something I was kind of expecting to see. I mean, it's it's, it's probably one of, certainly the most requested change from the World vs. World community, right? Like, since uh, the since beta, launch, really. BOF, oh, I oh, think beta, even was, beta, yeah, yeah. I think it was asked to be... I mean, and they did... They they nerfed it slightly, right? They mm. The um the rate at which you lose boons or whatever, I think, was toned down, yeah. but it's still too big. It just The radius needs to be smaller, yeah. and then I think it would be pretty decent. But. Yeah. Well, it's yes, yeah, it's, it's the radius combined with the with the effect. Right, the effect is incredibly strong. Like the because honestly, the... I I say that if Firebrand gets nerfed, it's gonna make Worldless really and fun. But honestly, I still think that the meta is gonna revolve around bubbles. And any, in my opinion, any time the entire meta revolves around one skill, it's bad. And that's yeah. every single fight. Just rely. Like, if you get good bubbles, you win. If you get bad bubbles, you lose. Like it's just it's stupid. So yeah, there's certainly uh, you know the 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 bubble is very very strong. Like right? the the ability yeah. to not be able to get boons is... It's, and it's I, I don't good. understand why it's they wouldn't good. nerf it either. I mean, it's not used in Worldless Ro uh Sorry, it's not used in PvE or mm. PvP. It, well, I mean, I see some warriors running in PvP, but I don't know why they would. But it's it's not used in either game mode. So it's only for World vs. World. And it clearly needs to be nerfed there, but it's not being nerfed. So it can't be that they're, you know, not nerfing it because they're worried about a different game mode. So I, you know, I, I just don't get it. Yeah, it is very unusual um, for, for the reason that you just said, right? I mean... Uh, it, it, changing it would change nothing in the other game modes. So, so why, why not? I guess they just can't be bothered, Roy. They can't be bothered to change that radius number from what is you it? Just got to tweak a couple it, numbers, man. It's, it's, it's like, three. Turn the dial down a little bit. I... Well, they, they could be targeting it a bit later on because you know, let's give a little bit of a little bit of you know benefit of the doubt here. So, if, if we look at these balance uh, changes, you can see that they've kind of it's been they, what a year. <laughs> they've done some slightly more major changes to what is it, Revenant. Necro and well, ne Vervent, Necro, Guardian, and Ellie. I guess like so there, there have been some like, fairly significant reworks. I don't, reworks I don't they... really think Firebrand has been changed that much. Ah, they they, they, cha they changed two skills. You know, oh, that's a pretty. That's... Yeah, we got we got yeah. a new staff. A new, you know? a new but skill. again, yeah. in in World versus World, it doesn't matter. You're not in your weapons. No, like, no, no, it's all about the tomes on Firebrand. No, well, well, not... there's, there's obviously been a bit of development time going there, right? They had to develop okay, the new sure. skill. They had to develop the new auto attack with like Holy Strike. Okay. So, like, so all I'm saying uh -huh. is that they, they seem to be targeting a few classes at once, right? And it, it, maybe they'll get there in the end, right? You get there in the end, maybe. Uh, but I don't know. Yeah, after no oh, and Reaper got changed a lot as well. Yeah, oh, you're oh, I, I love Re Reaper buffs, yeah. dude. I'm all about Reaper buffs. Yeah. All right, you can make Reaper the most OP thing, bro broken thing in the game. I don't care. I love it. It's well, the best class. Oh yeah, it's so much fun. Mo well, moving on to 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 Necro and Reaper. Right? I mean, I I do think that this this is uh, these buffs to Reaper. I would say it's kind of like saying like Scourge was a bit of a mistake. Okay, like they were saying yes, <laughs> we don't want you to play well, Scourge anymore. But, but the nice so, thing is, I don't think Reaper replaces Scourge, and that's that's what I like about it. I, I mean, I don't, I honestly, I'm, I'm still worried that Scourge is going to be too strong, but I really like that they, they, they buffed Reaper, but they didn't make it so Scourge just completely pushed out, you know? Well, I, 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 I would have liked that, but then they added like, well, I mean, in terms of world versus world, they had like the best skill in the entire game to, to Necro though, right? I mean, like the new, oh, the yeah, well, yeah, that, yeah. that is, <laughs> I was, I was going to say, yeah, they're, they're buffing Reaper, they're, they're trying to make Reaper <laughs> compete with Scourge. Then they add yeah, literally the best ability in the entire game. I mean, I you know what though? I, I just on on lingering curse. I want to say that I just love the design of this trait. I wish they would do this more. The idea that a trait will change a weapon skill, yeah. right, to a completely new. I think that's yeah. so so cool. I mean, that's so. Yeah, I love that. Uh, it's yeah. a shame it's like absolutely busted. Uh, okay, but yeah. um, <laughs> but still, you, you know. Think so? Yeah, I think in PvE, yeah. In, I, I think it's pretty strong. In in World yeah, vs. World, in, in World vs. World, I would say for sure. Uh, it, it might be good in PvP, but I'm not. Yeah. I, I thought people really played, were I red spite in World of World, not curses. Not I anymore. think it's worth taking curses. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's that strong. It's it's oh, broken. Is it? oh. oh yeah, it's unbelievable. It needs to be nerfed. It's gonna, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna run. Uh, yeah. I'm kind of worried, but yeah, I mean, you know, whatever. The, that, aside from that, it's cool. It's cool. The necro changes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so the devouring darkness is is um a bit busted in world versus world for several reasons. I mean, for a start, it's a, it, it's not it's um balance split right a little bit. So in PvP, mm -hmm. um, scepter three on your necro corrupts two conditions. Mm -hmm. Okay, but in world versus world, it's three for a start. So that's already quite alarming. 
But then the fact the Varying Darkness is an AoE as big as Time Warp. Okay. And uh, <laughs> even if it doesn't hit your target, it yeah, still oh, hits no. the people yeah, around yeah. your target. Th this is so why if your target yeah. dodges, it'll still yeah. hit the other four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, it, this, is, uh, this is where I thought it could have been balanced. Because when I read this, I thought, aha, you have to land the Scepter 3 to get the AoE yeah. boon corrupt, yeah. right? So, okay. Yeah, like, that may makes sense. Maybe, that makes sense. That, yeah. Maybe that's not actually that bad. It's but, basically an <laughs> AoE, huge totally AoE them. corrupt, it's which is undodgeable and unblockable. It's actually as big as... Yeah, it's pretty Sorry, crazy. Yeah, go ahead. Ron, like sorry. the range or the radius when it hits? It's as it's big as time warp, yeah. The radius. The radius, yeah. Yeah, yeah the range it's is 900, right? So standard yeah. range weapon. It's just... It's, That's yeah, actually, it's too strong. Like, I, I wasn't aware strong. of that fact. I wasn't aware of this. So <laughs> anyone <laughs> not running... Anyone not running Devouring oh, Darkness in the world, you are wrong. It's just... Yeah, it, it's, it's busted. It's busted. Just like, just like how if an entire meta revolves around one skill... If if taking an entire trait line for one trait is viable, it's just you know it clearly needs to be nerfed. I mean, it's just it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's 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 pretty bloody crazy. I mean, there, there are some other so there's some other pretty good traits in in curses to be fair, but I mean this one eclipses all of them uh, by by far. Um, and yeah, and the, yeah. the interactions with line of sight are all. I, some of this stuff I feel like just didn't get tested. Like, th this trait kind of makes it like they had. They really didn't. They didn't try this in Worldverse as well, did they? Uh, they didn't think about this in Worldverse as well, and, and that's a little sad. Which is, you know, that's bad news for the people who want to get bubble nerfed, I guess, uh, because I, I I feel that this is almost an oversight. That like there's they, they, if, if anyone if if they talk to say Roy about this, okay, Roy just said this is going to be busted, broken OP in World versus World, right? Like, I would have said, great, let's do it. Yeah, no, 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 you would not. <laughs> right. So it, it's I don't know. Like this this trait is fun. I love the design on it. I think it needs to get nerfed really hard. Um, yeah. No, but, the idea is awesome. Change, yeah. A trait changing a weapon like Tifa is it's awesome, but it definitely needs to be toned down. Maybe just reduce the Condi damage that it adds well, on top of like, the Reduce the amount of goons it corrupts, I think. Reduce the AOE, the radius, and if, yeah. if, you're, if you're target, I don't know about that. Dodge oh, yeah, radius, yeah, you can, yeah. Maybe yeah. turning down the radius. It's, it's, but I think it's cool it's a, that it's like a 10 second cooldown? 10 second cooldown, yeah. 10 seconds, yeah. It's insane. Yeah. It's, that's insane. I mean, that's like a, it's basically like a, a well of corruption that insta-corrupts three boons mm. on a 10 second cooldown at a 900 range radius that's undodgeable and unblockable. Like, yeah. I don't... Wait, it's undodgeable? I don't see the problem. Uh, I don't know I about unblockable. That. I mean, like, if you block no, it, it's, it's, it's blockable. Around, yeah. I, I tested that. I mean, I tested it in a PvP server. Like but I did hear that you can't dodge it. Yeah. And it's the five players. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it's... I don't know. I think it's I think it's a bit too strong. I think it's a bit too strong. Um, uh, well, in terms of like balance, like I, I, well, I think if you reduce it to say one boon, if one so, one boon, I think that wouldn't be too bad. Because like, wouldn't that be kind of interesting if that what if there was more of a trade off, right? So if you take this trait, right, you get less single target boon corrupt, but you get more AOE boon corrupt, right? Because like, feast of corruption, yeah. it would be three boons on a single target, right? But if you take the trait, then it's one boon on five people, right? Something that would be interesting. It'll obviously, fix the line of sight issues, that sort of thing. I don't know. That would be kind of cool. I, I I like the idea of some traits being a trade off, especially necro traits. Because if we look in spite, right, we have what's it called, awaken the pain, which is a trade off between you you get more power damage, but you get less condition damage when you have might. I don't know. That kind of fits necro's theme a little bit. So if you had some more traits that were they had pros and cons to them, then that would be pretty interesting actually, uh, and that could be extended across across the other game modes as well. But um, yeah, I don't know. Really, really cool design change. On the on uh, this this trait yeah. here, lingering curse boys, just dodge, yeah. just dodge, Roy. Okay, just yeah, dodge, just dodge, and, just dodge. And, and the other people yeah. around me still get fucked. But yeah, hey, everyone that's... has to dodge. Everyone has to dodge at the well, same time. Well, you have time. to pretend you have to pretend it's an AOE circle, right? Like, because if it was like say um Wait, does, a mark, it... right? You drop a mark, um one person dodges, the other people get hit. So you just gotta pretend that's what it is. But yeah, I do agree there should be a trade off from three boons. I wouldn't say to one. I'd say to two, because then you you won't take that trait if it only rips one aoe because that's kind of yeah, minor uh, no i, I think i think I would, no I, I would balance play here between least... i think i think you would balance play here between pvp and world versus world right so you would take in pvp it could probably stay the same as it is now i think it's fine actually ish maybe fix the line yeah, yeah fix the it's, line it's not that right? it's not that broken pvp just because yeah. the aoe factor isn't as like exactly, prevalent yeah. as in a world, world. Yeah. so I, I think in, yeah in pvp you can you can leave it as it is mostly just fix the um fix the line of sight issues Maybe fix the issue that um, it will still hit people even if the main target dodges. Maybe that's too much. I don't know. But in World vs. World, I, I, yeah, I think it could... 
I think it would still be good if it was one boon AoE, right? I mean, I it's not like you good. weren't using Scepter in the first place, right? So... Exactly. So yeah. It, well, the thing is, you you in PvP, then you you'd have to you to take a new trait, right? You want to take because normally you would take weakening shroud, but then you, if you want to use this ability, you have to take lingering curse. So there is a bit of a trade off. Right? Weakening shroud is AIDS as well. It's really annoying because you give you weaken people all the time. And that's cancer. Yeah, weakness is really strong in PvP. Yeah. That was... but, all right. So, but do you like the reaper changes? Oh, we talk oh, about yeah. lingering, lingering. Oh man, lingering darkness. this is great. Uh, it, 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 <laughs> yeah, this is so awesome. I love, I love the Reaper changes. Now, well, first and foremost, yeah. what do you, I mean? How do you, how do you feel about the death perception change? I guess because it's uh, again, it's it's uh, I, it's an interesting one because it makes a core spec better because it's in soul reaping. But yeah, I think it's really good. Like, so strength of undeath gives you another five percent damage, and then in death perception, they they traded some of the precision for ferocity. This is really good because in a lot of the situations, you. 50% extra crit is a lot of overkill almost, yeah. right? Like you just don't need 50% crit a lot of the time because you already have, say if, say if you play Marauder, you're already on a, like about 60% crit, right? So like 50 is not really necessary. And if you have any Fury on you, then it's completely wasted on you. Uh, so 300 Frosty is a lot as well, um, especially in, in PvP where the stats are a bit squashed. They're not as extreme as the other game modes. So yeah, Death Perception, it, it, this is a really cool yeah. change, and I don't know, maybe it can make Core Necro a bit better as well, but like, obviously it's mainly targeted. We're never going to see Core Necro. It, it, yeah, no, no. But yeah. they, they buff Terra, dude. Have you seen how much damage Terra does? Uh, Fearomancer, yeah. boys, all okay? Right. First of all, yeah. even if Scourge wasn't busted, dude, they just buffed the shit out of Reaper, and it's like nutty. I don't think we're going to see Core, core Necro anytime soon. <laughs> a lot of the buffs hit Scourge, too. They were, they buffed a yeah. lot of minor traits, so that was, that was kind of cool. Yeah, mm. and I mean, again, like Death Perception is soul, in Soul Reaping, which I think you can run. On Scourge and it, yeah, uh, I just don't like how they buff the damage so. on Reaper. I think yeah. I think Re damage is the one thing Reaper it's... didn't need because the more you, you just keep pushing out damage like that, it's gonna reach a point where it becomes, I mean, yeah, like, it's match like or something. It's just a glass in. cannon. Like honestly, I Reaper almost reminds me of Core Guardian just without the like the ports and stuff because it it just does so much. I mean, I was getting one shot and I didn't know what was going on. I was really confused and then I saw like two Reapers just pressing one on me. I was like, oh okay. And um, yeah. I mean, it's I again. I love it because I love the class. I think it's such a fun class. But it probably is a bit too much damage. And I, like Nara said, yeah, you probably didn't need more damage on it. Um, it's it is very squishy though. So I mean, you know, you can kill them pretty quickly. I think, although yeah, yeah it is squishy. I mean, that's why and it doesn't have a lot of self just still taken in, in like yeah. uh, competitive games. But in ranked, you can just put on a reaper and just one shot everything. Mm. And I don't really think that's uh, that's good balance, to be honest. Like, give it some functionality. Yeah. Like, make Scourge like the big DPS range bot, and then make Reaper like this melee, like chill bot or something like that, where it doesn't hit as hard, but it's really hard to kill. Something like that. That would have been like better design, as opposed to just going into Shroud and instantly just proccing everything and hitting everyone for like tanky <clears throat> damage. Yeah, I, I, it's it's a slightly alarming direction the balance is going right like as as we were saying earlier like every every more and more damage is happening all over the place right like everyone's everyone just one shots everyone at this point and then the only no, thing is usually not a good thing that desperately tries to keep you alive is via bread yeah uh, sorry go ahead i was just saying you don't you don't want to push out more damage like just too much spike is never good mm. it just doesn't make it fun for anyone if it's just one shot or be one shot, you know, there has to be like some thought process, mm. kind of like yeah. the way like Prod Hollow used to be. You know, it didn't do that much damage, but you had to kind of think about uh, CC, like using all your CCs to chain them and then get a kill. Like that was kind of a good design, but then they just buffed like this ridiculous amount of quickness, and now Hollow just pops perma quickness and then one, 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 and it just hits really hard. And that's like a way worse yeah. design. There's, than not, just, there's not a lot of yeah. counterplay involved i think it seems like and it and not like i mean you kind of just press your buttons and kill things you know it's not you're not yeah, like you want people to know why they died like they need to yeah. know like okay i messed yeah. up here this is why i died but it's not like because yeah. you get jumped by like a reaper or a mantra or something or a dead eye from self yeah. it's just like okay i'm dead I, there's nothing i can do about it like it's just kind of stupid yeah. you just give up and go, then you have unlucky well, go next a, a bit a bit of a problem with that is that, that like would you say like the passive proc, the spinal shivers proc that would just like randomly one shot you? I, Especially if it... I actually think. Well, yeah, there's that. Also, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about this, but um, I forget what the trait is called. I think spiteful spirit. Yeah. When you go into shroud, it, it's that. The, I mean, yeah, I think that it probably needs to be toned. It does a ton of damage. It does a lot yeah. of damage, and it can it's, like four it, boon rip as well. It, like, it applies weakness. Low. It yeah. corrupts boon. I mean, it's and like if you have two reapers, because I mean, every single game there's a reaper. Every single game, there's a Reaper. Usually one on each team. Sometimes two on each team. 
I mean, if you have two Reapers go into Shroud at the same time, they're just you're just done. You're done. Yeah, they should give it the equilibrium treatment because the way equilibrium worked was if you had 50 energy, which is something yeah. your enemy didn't know, and then you swap legends, which is an instant cast, you get hit for like 5k, right? Along with like hydro or back then with the hydro mm. procs and whatnot, it was like a one shot. And then mm -hmm. it's the same with Reaper. You don't know when they go into Reaper shot because it is instant. You go into Shroud and then you just got hit. Like you can't, you mm -hmm. can anticipate it and maybe random dodge, but you'll never see an animation of them going into Reaper Shroud. You just yep. got hit, which is like a bad design. I think what they should do is change that trait where you get a buff, where it's like your next attack bo rip spoons uh, or yeah. something if they want to keep the boon rip, or um, you just get a small buff when you go into Shroud, something like that. But it shouldn't just be outright instant cast passive damage. That's generally not good. Yeah, it's certainly very, very strong, and I don't know. Hey, of course, it, it, Reaper does have that disadvantage over Scourge. I think, I think why yeah. why Scourge really thrives is not only has does it does it have range, right? Which is obviously really, really strong. But barrier, it, yeah, the the barrier, the way barrier Helps works, barrier. the way it doesn't have Shroud kind of helps it out a lot because it means the Firebrand can always heal it, whereas the Reaper, when it's in Shroud, like it's it's difficult to yeah. kind of get that support offer on it, right? And of course, like Reaper being melee is a a slight disadvantage as well. Although the world versus world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For for War versus World purposes, certainly, right? Like, I mean, obviously, yeah. like, having like, massive ranged AOE is always going to be very, very strong. Uh, it just regardless, right? That's just how the game mode is. Uh, but I don't know. Like, Reaper. I don't know. Re Reaper is. I really like the design changes. Like, perma quickness is awesome. You know. You know. It's really funny, actually. Okay. Uh, so for for PV, this is an aside for PV. Uh, Reaper is now like the ultimate open world class. Just as a side meme here, guys. Okay, I'm sure there's loads of people who love open world in the chat. Okay, but now Reaper can perma stack 25 might on itself. Okay, and quickness, and have a hundred percent crit chance, all on one class. You don't even need Chronos anymore. Like all you need is yourself. Okay, you don't need you don't need a might stacker. Don't need a Chrono. You can just give yourself perma quickness. Uh, all they, all it needs is alacrity now. They need to add Re alacrity to Reaper's onslaught. Okay, this trait now grants quickness <laughs> and alacrity. Okay, during well in Reaper shroud. How about that? That would be even better. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's awesome. Reaper is is fucking pog, dude. Okay, so much damage. It you just destroy people now. It's hilarious. Um, I don't know. I I, I would really love it to see play. I I'd really love it to see play at, um at a more competitive level. Uh, I think it's just. It, it's probably pretty it's tricky. Happen, though. It's tricky to pull off. I think that's that's the problem, right? Especially against good players. I, I feel like Reaper is is worse against good players than. I think yeah, it's. I think it's, I think it's it ranked is. few classes. Like like Core Guardian is, and I've said this for a while. Like in the last few patches as well. Core Guardian, I think, is a decent class to play in ranked queues, but I don't think in like an actual competitive level, like a tournament or whatever, or you know, if like Pro League was around, whatever. I don't think you'd see it. Um, <clears throat> It's it's very yeah it's a pug stomper like that like reckless just said in, in Twitch chat it's a lot of fun to play it's probably broken in regards to like ranked queues but it's not better than mm. it's not gonna replace scourge in the fire and scourge duo um, but it's I think it I think it does need to be not necessarily nerfed just changed you know the it just seems like again like again it just, it, you can't really you can't really play around there's no counterplay for it you press a button and you die or well you kill the people you know it's which is not really a good thing. That's good. That's good. Just instantly dying. That's good. Stuff. I said it's not a good thing, and you say <laughs> good it's good. Stuff. All right. Cool. Yeah, it's good. Kill everything instantly. Yeah. Teapot just wants to beam today. Yeah. Let's go. When, when does he not? Yeah. That's true. That is right. true. You, know, you know, look at look at Terra. Oh, we're not guys. we're not hating on Reaper. Like, I I like Reaper. It's probably my favorite class in the game, or Reaper one of my favorite cool. classes. In the game. But yeah, Reaper is still fun. Don't don't mistake what we're saying. It is yeah. still very fun to just go in and one shot people. Yeah, I, I love like playing that. Reaper. Dude. Yeah, it's, but it's it is funny. not it's good for balance. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. It's you know, it's kind of funny to see, but it's not necessarily fun. <laughs> like, it's it's not necessarily a good thing for the game overall. Um, but yeah, whatever. Yeah. All right, so. Wait, Rev. Rev. You know what? Right, we're on we're on the same page here. I was just about to say, yeah, let's talk about Rev. Okay. <laughs> and what happened to Revenant? Well, you know, I'll tell you what, we've got we've got such a perfect panel here because we have Revenant enthusiast uh Roy and Heal Rev enthusiast he Rocker as well. I'm all about the Heal Rev, dude. Right? Oh really? Heal Rev is a great name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright, nice, nice, nice. Perfect then in that case. Uh we're gonna have we're gonna have a great time. Wait, what the hell happened there? What the fuck? My Discord just went really know. weird. Uh, but never mind. Yeah. But anyway, so they first they changed the way uh, facet of nature works, right? And I, I, you're not a big fan of this change, Roy. Then is that no? Well, so I think 
I can hear myself. Is that? Yeah. Wait, what is that? Um, that might be me. I'm sorry. I'm, my headset is broken. So oh, I think it's just because I'm, I'm yelling. I'll, I'll, I'll speak cool. quietly. Oh, ASMR. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I I don't really think it's good in PvP. Um, the it just it doesn't. So the you obviously have to take Glint in PvP. I mean, the the stance is way too good to not take it. Hmm. And the the boon um, duration increase from the F2 when you when you uh, when you use it isn't really it's irrelevant it doesn't matter and then the you're obviously going to take shiro as well um and like the shiro f2 i think is okay but the old f2 was just it was just better for pvp um it's you definitely notice like the guy just says lack the lack of boons from f2 is really noticeable um and like there's times where i've been playing rev where i'll spam my f2 to get boons and then i'm like oh wait i don't get boons anymore uh and it's it's really it's really unfortunate i think in world versus world where you're actually playing with you know a, a bigger group of people uh, when you're taking other stances besides Shiro and and possibly even besides Glint, um, I think that you actually can see it used more, and I think it it's actually more beneficial to the group. But I think in PvP, it's really bad. Um, that the only that's it's really that's the only thing I really didn't like about the change. I um, the F2 for PvP, anyways. I think that some of the trait changes are fine. Some of the traits are kind of terrible, but overall, it doesn't really make Rev any worse than it was. Uh, and I also don't think it makes Rev better. Which is I, which is fine because I think Rev was in a decent place. Um, although I think Sword Four is still probably busted, but you know that's a different story. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I just didn't like the F two change for PvP. Everything else, I think, was okay. I gotta say though that the F two is. I think it's a lot more interesting now than it was before. It's interesting, like, sure. It's, yeah, like it's not. I just feel like getting... they can do something with this now rather than just like a flat up buff to the same stat. It's now actually like a choice that you make, and that the fact that you can consume it now, I think it's just way more interesting. The entire skill yeah. is way more interesting. Absolutely. Like it might be out of balance, but I think it's they they went in the right direction on it, in my opinion. I mean, I'm I'm a world versus world player, right? Like, you know, main world versus world player. I mean, I PvP a lot, but I, I I'm a main world versus world player. So we were really excited, me and my guild, when we saw the F2 changes because it's again, it has a lot of functionality for for world versus world. It's very interesting. Obviously, before literally you just double tapped F2 and you got some boons. Um, but it just again, the it just the the F2 changes are they're pretty much pointless in in PvP. It kind it just sucks. It just sucks. Mm. You know. Uh, like if it, I if it, I didn't have to take F two I wouldn't. It was almost like a role play change, right? It was uh, yeah. they 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 wanted to make the flavor of the class make a bit more sense, uh, in a way. Um, it, it, to be fair, like they made if even if they, they they did take some versatility out of the F two, right? That's what they they did there. Like they, they took a lot of, uh, you could just like, use it whenever you wanted, right? But now you have to really consider when you're going to use it like, to try and get the the most value out of it and I, I don't know to be too bad a good thing though yeah exactly yeah decisions for the player to make are, are it's, it's pretty good and uh, I now still it's think, just pointless that you just uh, look at it <laughs> uh, the shira one is still pretty good though i mean like you remove boons uh, so aoe boon rip is pretty good um, i mean it's it's not bad sure but i just don't think it does much you know i mean are we talking about the active effects or the passive effects? the the active the passive yeah um because i think it's already a good step that it has an active effect in the first place now right yeah well i mean the active effect before was that it gave you boons the passive Ooh. effect was um the increased boon duration um and so now the passive effect on glint is still the same as it was before and then it's different on every other so like the passive effect on shiro is that you and your allies have a chance to life steal um oh so the, the other thing about the f2 change is that on a lot of the f2 um tooltips they don't give you the actual modifier so like the jalous one for instance it doesn't say what uh the actual damage reduction it gives you um hmm. which is interesting do you know what so it, you do don't you know really what it is, know it's 10 percent. i think it's 10%. i think it's about 10 percent is what we we, we yeah, figured out we yeah so, i mean obviously it. it's not exactly hard to figure it out but it's kind of like all right so hmm. you know how yeah. good is it really um and so it's again i think in in larger group settings it's it's better than the old f2 because you weren't really getting much from from popping f2 before um in fact you kind of wanted to hold it as long as you could until you had to get the energy regeneration back but now i think you it's more beneficial to actually use it in certain situations in in this world maybe even in pv pv i don't know you, you know better than me but in pvp it's just you're a lot of times on rev you're roaming around the entire map you're going to be alone the the swiftness from the f2 is a lot more beneficial uh, and you're not going to be, I mean, you, you know, you're going to be jumping in and out of team fights, obviously. And of course, Boon Rip is good in 1v1, but it's not, it's, it's just not like, you know, takes away versatility in, in PvP, in my opinion. And it's, I just don't really think it was a good change for PvP. Again, did, didn't Rev, Rev still fine in PvP. Well, didn't but. Rev kind of have it coming? Because like Rev was suddenly burst onto the scene, right? And it was, 
mm-hmm. almost well, pretty I, problematic. But I heard right? that I mean, it didn't Rev address was, that. I heard Rev people... was kind of weird because I feel like as soon as people realized how strong Shackling Wave was, a lot of people started playing it. Um, and I still don't think it was necessarily meta um, in the ter- in terms of like a few patches ago in terms of like competitive play. So like, you know, PvP tournaments or whatever and, and like ATs and stuff. Like I, don't, I think a lot of people still weren't running it. But then gradually as like other stuff sort of got toned down and nerfed, it, it started like a lot of more people started playing it. And then as more people started playing it, you saw it a lot more. Um, and now I think it's in a pretty good place where I, I don't think it's too strong, but I also don't think it's weak. Um, I I, th- I think Shackling Wave is too strong as a skill. I mean, it like can one shot people, which is just stupid. But uh, you know, that's that's what it is. But yeah, I mean, it's 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 just weird because it kind of it was never really buffed, other than the sword change. It was never really buffed. It was just everything else kind of just got yeah everything got nerfed, which nerfed. is good, I guess, because yeah. then you know that the power creep yeah. is oh yeah no absolutely well except for Reapers, but you know <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nerf Reaper. Yeah. I mean, I, I would honestly sort of equate Rev to a bit of a pug stomper as well, like Reaper. Um, I think if you're a really good player on it, you can play it in competitive, but I, I think other stuff might be better. Um, yeah, the problem is where you put it. I think that's the yeah. biggest issue with Rev. Is it is, it, it would probably be like the sixth best class because. But then well, it kind of like, depends on it if you think Thief is good or not, because I think it can replace Thief if you think it's better than Thief. Um, no, but not in I, most scenarios. <clears throat> I know some yeah. people have been trying it over Thief, but Thief is just. Thief just yeah. does too much, and Rev can easily be like you can kind of just easily fend off a Rev in a team fight yeah. or in a plus. But like Thief, like the constant boon rev, I think that's the biggest thing is Rev. I mean, now it's better now with the new F two is that you know you're in Shira, you have you have access to two boon rips, which is cool. But the fact that Thief can just constantly press three, evade, boon rip, well, and it's unblockable just makes the it invaluable. Oh yeah, and they buffed Dagger Storm, so now if you're kind of in in a pickle, you just you know you just dagger storm four second evade, uh, <laughs> yeah. with with stab. So yeah, so there's that, and you get and it back reflect. when you yeah. Oh, reflect too. Yeah, and you get it back if you if you get the improv proc on it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah. I mean, I I like I said, I think Rev is in a pretty decent place. I don't really think it needs to be buffed. I think if you're a really good player on it, you can play it pretty competitively, and and it's it's good. And I think it's very good for like ranked queues. Um. I still think it gets countered very, very hard by condition classes. Like you don't want to run it into like a Mez and a Necro. Um, yeah, that's but, a big one. Yep. But I mean, that's okay because I, you know, there should be counterplay to it. And and really, I think the only counterplay to it is in like a one one is conditions mostly. Um, so it's you know, but yeah, again, Rev Rev good. Just don't like the F two for PvP. That's about it. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, they, well, they did kind of change. They they did rework some of the other stuff as well. Like they made they kind of put some more damage yeah. into like burst of strength gives you fifteen percent extra damage now for five seconds when you use it. They made elemental blast, but and your dragon wings yeah. are really fast now. Oh well. yeah, the elite is bomb yeah. too. Uh, it, they, it's I, I, faster I, <laughs> and it gives you super speed as well, dude, which is awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. I thought they were going to leave this in, but it actually got hot fixed um, a few days later. Right, like they the cooldown was twenty sec twenty seconds. Yeah, that in- that was. <laughs> There's oh, no actually, way they were keeping that. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out. They, they, um, right, at, right after the first patch came out, um, the Shiro port was bugged. It was on a 35 second cooldown. That was really uh, they, funny. Very um, funny. And they, they patched it very fast, which uh, kudos to them. Um, you know, as soon as, as soon as they like realized it, the next hot fix fixed it, um, which is mm. great. It was same day. They didn't leave it in the game. And that would have been awful because that, I mean, that's a huge bug. I mean, that, yeah, you can't play Rev without that. Can't play, yeah, exactly. So it's, yeah. it was really, so kudos, kudos to Arena for, for, for fixing that very quickly. So, um that was that was nice uh but yeah i mean there were there were a couple wonky things with uh with with rev on on release but that's okay um overall i mean i do like the f2 change like you said i mean it's it's cool it gives it functionality it it's not just you're getting some boons from it you know um, yeah, and, like and it. the f2 is a pretty big thing from herald too you know since the start mm. but it just it doesn't it doesn't work in pvp as well but so maybe Maybe just has it's slightly, slightly different, right? It's just it's slightly different, and it, it's for use for different things. If you, again, if you try and just use it for the same thing, it's going to be a bit yeah. rubbish. I I would say that some of the the passives could probably be buffed. I, I for example, I think the Shiro one. It, well, I don't know. I, I think a lot of the passives. I think the Shiro crap. passive is better than the Herald passive. I don't think. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. For example, the, the Herald passive is pretty bad. Honestly, it's yeah. it's, it's 
not it is basically the same as the old one except not as yeah. good right and yeah. one big problem with having a passive like that that's basically the same is that it costs three energy now right two yeah. energy isn't that bad but three energy uh, or um upkeep you, is, you is really, really don't harsh, want right? you're not using yeah, it for the passive exactly the you're, you're not going to be maintaining this a lot right because of how it's very expensive yeah. uh so there is yeah. that's, a, that's a bit of a problem now uh, the guns one is 20 percent boon duration so it's low oh, yeah. oof the boons, so is all, is... boons are an issue for F2, so I don't, I'm not like I'm not mad at them nerfing the glint one because you just had like easy access to boons 24/7. Yeah, that's true, which like, is kind of ridiculous. Running around like, with 25 mine instantly, yeah. so... perma swiftness, perma fear, like that mm -hmm. should not be a thing. You shouldn't be able to well, self-sustain uh, perma like relevant boons for that long. Well, someone, so, yeah, what someone wrote cool. in chat is is interesting. Um, they they did this huge rework to Herald, right? And yet Renegade is still like it's just not good. You know, it's it's interesting that they aren't trying to make Renegade relevant at all because you don't. I mean, you really, you could technically run it in World versus World because you don't want to double stack Herald. Um, but you're usually not going to be double stacking revs anyways, so you're probably not going to run Renegade and Herald's better as a solo rev, and you're definitely not going to run Renegade in PvP. And I don't think you run it in PVE. Yeah, you do. It, it's it's actually oh, it's like the strongest yeah. DPS class. It's oh, okay. Really, so good. all right, so it's good in PvE, but it's you know it's not used competitively really at all. Did um, you see Frosty's benchmark? Yeah, he's the best rev in the game, Roy. Yes. Oh, really? Is he really? He is. Oh, good for Frosty, dude. He's had a couple he for a while. He beat the benchmark cheaters. Yeah. He, beat <laughs> he, beat, he didn't uh, even. He didn't even use a rip, guys. Dude, okay? Frosty he, Crows, let's go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the big he, ups to my man. Yeah, he's taken Frost over. Frost Crows. Frost Crows. Yeah. Forced Crows. Yeah. yeah. I I feel like some of the passives could be improved a bit. For for example, like, the, for the Shearer one, they actually like copy pasted um the Necromancer lifesteal aura code over. I, it's like, almost the same values as well, and it has a half second cooldown as well. It's it's basically the same passive. So when you maintain your Shearer, like everyone every every everyone around you like, gets a every half second they get they get a hundred lifesteal. I mean that's pretty shit. It's just like vampiric. Or yeah, like it's, it's basically uh, vampiric presence. Like, um, we I did some testing. And I, I think it actually functions identically to it. Um, it even has very similar numbers on it. Like it just it's a bit higher. It's like a hundred every half second or something. But I don't know. I, well, I, I, uh, this is not... I would generally like to bring up the the PVE side of things because I think they did do some interesting stuff to Herald that unfortunately isn't as impactful as I think it should be. Um, be like I think like a big. Very cool trade change was that uh, the fastest can go to ten people now, um, and for PVE that's actually that's like a pretty big thing, right? That that's that means there's one class now that is has actual competitive might stacking capabilities to Druid, um, and can actually like perma supply things like Fury and uh, very strong passive region and stuff. Um, so I found that very useful. Unfortunately, other classes kind of make that useless. Like other classes, like just do it better. Like, like at first I was very excited, and I mm. like actually immediately started to build a boon sharing revenant and uh, a, a herald, and it was a, uh, um, yeah, and it felt really good. But then, like as I thought about it, it was like it was made insignificant by the boon sharing capabilities of other classes already in the game. But I think like they went a smart direction in the way by making that ten man trait. Um, I think that was a very cool trait. It just like. It would need some general balance changes to make that really impactful or really significant, but that's the grandmaster, right? Yeah, that's the great you know? uh, grandmaster. And it's yeah. not just seven mind; it's it's like it's like yeah. forty it's, it's to fifty. Because if they, you know, if they didn't make that stronger, you would have to be choosing between that or a pretty big damage modifier in that. Uh, in yeah, the grandmaster it's, it's definitely um, like a support trait, right? And, and yeah, I actually exactly. tried to, to build a more offensive uh, revenant build for yeah. like offensive boon sharing, but. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's there's your there's your support rev right there. You know, and this, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it works pretty well. It's actually probably the most AFK heal build I've played ever because you well, basically just you pop facets and then you auto attack and you go AFK. I mean, maybe um, in like maybe in PVE, but I think in in World vs World would be really interesting to see if it was good because in PVP it was it was actually really awful when Ventari mm -hmm. rev was sort of around because it was it was you could it was really unkillable and it just knocked people off node. So I mean, when they nerfed the the knockback, that was a really good thing for PVP. Uh, and I, I don't think you'd probably see it in PvP, but like for World vs. World, it'd be really interesting to see how it worked because you're obviously constantly moving around in World vs. World. And so, you know, you have to be very mindful of where your tablet is and stuff. Um, and it'd be interesting to see if people can make it work. Uh, I think it's I think it's a really interesting build. Uh, I've actually and I don't, thought about yeah. a build for, for Revenant for World vs. World. Like we did this on stream a little bit, thinking about how this could work in World vs. World, but 
it doesn't seem like it's going to be better than what Revenant already does there. So, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, heal Rev. I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't even really Dude, like. You heal might Rev, be surprised, but... but Ventari heals for a lot. No, no, it I does. know it does. It heals for a shit ton. I, mean, I know. I think, you, I think you can out heal guardians and, and i know i know i know it heals a lot but i just find it very clunky uh to use oh yeah it's clunky as hell, 100%. Um, and, and that's i think where the the changes need to be targeted make increasing the usability Honestly, it, it could be as simple as just increasing um just, uh, aoe's just make right? this have a follow you automatically like yeah. a little pet. There, there could be something like that yeah something that it, it can it follows you a lot easier like i would just remove the energy cost from moving the tablet probably just like make mm -hmm. it see so you don't have to spend energy doing that um, but then probably reduce the healing the moving itself does as well. I, I also just Gotta... really hate the delay. I, I hate the delay on the way it heals with them. Like the, the, the main heal on the tablet, I think it's really stupid. Um, it just mm -hmm. makes it feel bad. Uh, and I, I really think there are some boon access issues as well. Like, wh why? How, how is it that Ventari can't get Vigor at all? Like, what is this? I, I, I think that's mm. just so ridiculous. Like, why, why can't Yeah, there definitely needs to be more Vigor. Um, like, there's almost no Vigor access in, in World vs. World, for instance. I mean, I don't know about pv but is you don't see there yeah. a lot it's well i guess you, you get it on mesmer right um but yeah, other than that yeah. there is some small access of course on guardian yeah. like in the in the but I, I, almost that's the three not, yeah it's, it's not, not a high it, priority yeah. ability right yeah. it's not it's not no. something you want to be going crazy spamming yeah. right it's, it's mostly through yeah. the, the mesmer if you if you have a mesmer in your group uh but yeah, yeah I, I, I just think there is there are some problems with boon access on on the the, the rev there of course that's fixed now with herald right? because of course herald has yeah i mean very I was about strong to say, boon I think, access you can kind of see their approach mm. things though like they want herald to be the boon stacking thing mm. um and ventari to be like the heal thing and like if you play it like when i played it it felt like when you're in herald you can really focus on just boon stacking and once you get a pressure situation you can just swap to ventari and you have crazy heals so well, for example, it was very good to counter something like delaying CC on Gorzival or something, um, which isn't a huge deal. And other classes can, of course, do it as well. But um, like, it felt like you have a very obvious choice, but I'm just not always sure if the trade-off is, is worth it. It feels like you lose too much by going into Ventari if you are meant to be a boon stacker. And um, well, if you, if you just want to go for heal, then spamming Ventari is actually all pretty much better than unless you really want to go afk then uh, ventari is actually like the better heal than uh than than herald so it's like hmm? maybe there needs to be a trait in say salvation that allows you to swap back and forth quicker maybe yeah yeah but maybe like even keep some effects up for a little bit longer um, well, they tried I heard to do that, that right? Trait was bugged yeah. as well. Draconic Echo um, is actually bugged right now. So you know how it may. So when you swap out of Glint, right, and you, if you have any facets, if you main, or when you detonate them, rather, I, I believe, or something. Yeah, you have to detonate them. Yeah, the effect lingers for six seconds or something, so you get two extra pulses, but it actually doesn't do anything. So there you go. Yeah. I don't know. I, heal, heal Rev is, is a bit tricky. I know you've been having a lot of fun at Rocker, and of course it does have a lot of... <laughs> I've it, mostly been having fun because it's different, honestly, yeah. because it's something new that I've never really done before. I don't think the, the usability really changed that much to what it was before. Like, it was a pretty good heal spec already, mm. and now they just, like, it feels like they mostly, like, reworked some groundwork on the class, right? Yeah. Like, they, they renamed the facets to and consume skills so they would, like, they, I, th I bet in, in the actual engine of the game, the uh, change was probably really big by like creating actually like facet as a whole skill category so you could have traits interacting with it and um, making the active effect turn into like consume skills so traits could interact with it. Um, but like overall, the change to the class itself as it worked in PvE, I don't think is that great. Um, then again, the, the biggest change I saw there was like the 10 mad change and that just doesn't really... Yeah, it's it's just not that significant while you have classes out there that do it better, basically. Like, the might isn't really significant as long as you have a druid who can do it plus um, uh, plus spirits, right? The, the protection isn't really significant as long as you have uh, Kronos providing it or other classes providing it. and Or again, druid providing it, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, 10 target Fury is nice, but then again, I don't know, like, is that... That's, you, you already have Mesmus, right, for Fury, so it's it's, it's really tricky. It's not... It just doesn't do anything better, right? It doesn't have anything fresh yeah. that it brings to the table over, over other classes. And and again, I think I think it really suffers from usability issues in, in PvP and World versus World as well. Although you know it, it can be very strong. Like go and watch Gregor's stream. You can. I mean, the, the ten the player big, change is, is, is new did. and cool, but it's just not really it's just not really applicable, or like yeah. significant. Well, we've probably so. talked about Rev enough.
Yeah. I great would say stuff. so. <laughs> great stuff. Great stuff. <laughs> Amazing. Nara, the premier Rev player. Well, actually, the CC, the like, the change to Glintily, I think, was also pretty significant for PvE, because, like, CC is much more, it's, it's much better now, actually. For bosses yeah. like Samurai or Slothasaur, when you have fast phases, you couldn't usually use uh, the yeah, Elite. It was, much, it was a much longer cast time before, yeah. Yeah, it's so really, that's interesting. It's that really fast now, it's really fast. Yeah. It's really it feels really very good, actually. I, fi I found it felt bad before, yeah. when it was as well. So, what, from... Teapot, you have a hole in your sleeve by your elbow, too? Yes, oh. I'm afraid so. <laughs> oh, that's so cool! Uh, We're brothers! I feel bad. This dressing gown is falling apart, man. It's only <laughs> oh, a matter awesome, of time. Yeah. Ah, Guys, that's this so streamer cool. is so poor, yeah. he can't actually yeah. afford a proper bathrobe. That's Why is true. nobody subscribing it, to this yeah, guy? Guys, nice! Like, it's it's like all guys. your money. Fund a bathrobe for Teapot. Uh, make, a, make a bathrobe. Wait, hold on. Where, what about me? I have a hole in my sweatshirt. I don't get anything for that? Fuck you, Raka. Do you know what month and it Roy is, too, of course. Roy, Do you know what yeah. month it is, is Roy? Right? It's September. It's yeah. half off. Is it September? Yeah. Wow, it's, it's September. almost like I just started streaming again. Yeah. So, Mesmer changes. Mesmer. Well, Mesmer. They they uh, some interesting things happened here. They they tried to tone down like the evade spam a bit. So they've 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 nerfed the vigor up time. Is what they've done here. It, they've they've chopped it down a little bit by what is it? Like, at nearly fifty percent. Okay, so now you can't spam your dodges as much. So fuck you, Mesmer players. There you go. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. That, that's I, it. <laughs> well, for, I mean, they they tried to bring Scepter into this, and I mean, some guy tried to debate me in the YouTube comments. I, I mean, I don't know. They, they did buff Scepter a lot, right? Like it's a, it got a shit ton of clone generation now, actually. Um, so the illusionary counter, you get two clones. If you land the counter spell, you get a third clone as well. Um, to be honest, we should have Zeromus on, on, on tea time. You tell us about that. Special guest. And confusing images, they made that do more damage as well. They, it's, it does 25% more damage, and you get an extra confusion stack as well, like an extra extra strike as well. Uh, yeah. So except, yeah, except, you know what? Scepter is a quite um it is a lot better. But the thing is, I think Mesmer has such strong it's Mesmer players in chat. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, right? But I feel like there's so much strong competition, right, with the other weapon sets that I think it's going to be difficult to find a way for Scepter to get in there, right? Uh, like sort of like sword and axe are already really really strong. And I mean, I don't, I don't know. Maybe some kind of gimmick builds could we can see come out of this. I but, um, I'm a little bit sad that it's kind of replacing X on in PVE for Mirage. On, so, on certain bosses, yeah. On certain yeah. bosses. Uh, the ones that attack very quickly, they've. They, it's actually worth the play Scepter now because of how, how strong Confusion is, right? I mean, I, um, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm not a Mesmer main or anything, but, like, I just kind of found it a little bit sad that, like, X, which is, like, the specialization weapon meant, meant to be the Mirage weapon, basically, is, is being replaced by it. But... Mm. I don't. I don't know it well enough. I guess I don't. Uh, I, I kind of like the idea though that you use different um different weapons on different bosses though in PVE. Uh, one, one of the things that I, I think it could be improved about the way the PVE meta is is that you you if you use different builds for different bosses. I kind of like it. Mm -hmm. Do you do you use different weapons for different bosses? This is just me being uninformed, right? I I just saw the ridiculous scepter uh, numbers on on bosses like oh, Karen yeah. and stuff. Uh, on bosses that attack very quickly. I believe in particular, Can and Desmina scepter is better now than um than X. Uh, so um, basically, and and how about Matthias? Uh, I don't know actually. Someone did a number crunch on it and posted it to Reddit, but okay. I'm not sure. So because that's like half of the bosses already that you even play Mirage on, really. Or like that you mainly play Mirage on. Yeah. So in, in regards to PvP with Mesmer, um, you know, these changes aside, because I, I think I think Mesmer needed to be nerfed in regards to how strong it was at dueling, um, and how how it could um well, maybe not survive plus ones, but uh portal. Because I think I think no matter how much you nerf Mesmer, right? I think you're still gonna take it in PvP because of Portal. Mm. Uh, because yeah. how strong Portal is. So you know, some people suggested portal nerfs. Um, oh man, I know... no, that's terrible. <laughs> that why, is all right, so no, why, why, why no, don't you think dude. you should nerf portal? Portal is the one thing Anet should never nerf because it actually like requires like coordination and a brain to use. It's not just this thing where it's like, oh, I just use portal and now I I win. No, like you have to well, think about how you reason, use it. Which... The reason I don't like portal is because I feel like it's it's extremely strong, right? Uh, I mean, obviously, and if you run it, 
it can't really be countered except by another portal. And so you're sort of forced to run Mesmer. No, it can't be. That's the thing, though. Like, it, it adds another, like, layer to everything, which, is, which isn't which is something you should take away, I don't think. Because the fact that you can kind of, like, there's three nodes, you know, there's a map. Uh, and you can the fact that you can move your team from X to Y uh, with your portal is really big. And there are ways to counter it. Like, for example, right. if Mesmer on blue team portals from mid to home, they Zerg home. The, whoever's home leaves and then your team Zerg's far kind of thing. Like, it's just, it just adds too much to the game for you to remove it. And it's not even like, it doesn't do anything to rank. Like, you don't really, like, how often do you, you're like, oh, shit, I just lost this game because this Mesmer has portal. Like, it's not that kind of broken, you know? It's not, it's not really ruining anything. And if you did lose a game because of portal, then it's just you got outplayed by that said Mesmer because they used their portal correctly. Dude, so I don't think, dude. I think that's the one skill you should never, like, nerf ever. It's just too good. Interesting. Okay. Like, for the game. Like, healthy for the game, I mean. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I okay. agree. Portal is, is a... It's a very cool skill, right? It's very cool. It's uh, it's something that is it's always good to see. Like, having some kind of unique thing that you want to have. I mean, it, it certainly is very strong, right? And... I always um, like Portal in any aspect. Like, just the, like... Just, just as Nara says. Like, you can add so much strategy just, to uh, a game with Portals. Make, like, what... Make- Make Sandswell 5,000 range. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do that. <laughs> yes. No, you, you, what you do is you just select... It. If you're in PvP, you can select a point on the map and you can just Sandswell <laughs> yeah. directly. Yeah, kind of like the trap, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh. oh, that would be great. Uh, yeah. Quick shout out to the subs there, guys. Okay, thank you guys so many. Uh, Topic gifted a tier 3 sub, okay? And Noxie gifted some subs as well. And Roy gifts subs, okay? Wow. But memes wow. aside, though, what I would do to Mesmer is I would I would nerf just the the, the front loaded burst that it has, mm. especially with with the axe variant. Because yeah. before before axe kind of got uh, buffed and it became like a uh, kind of meta, I guess. Um, staff was a good. It was staff was just better. Everything was more telegraphed. It was in like front loaded twenty plus confusion right off the bat from stealth yeah. and the constant retargeting. Like I think it's just the axe pistol variant that kind of makes Mesmer feel not fun to yeah, play against. Fun. I would nerf. I would nerf that damage. I wouldn't, because what they're doing is they're constantly nerfing like every Mesmer build. Like when they when you reduce the vigor, because there are builds that Mesmer has that aren't like as broken. So if you want less dodges with that meta build, just nerf the axe. You know, don't don't nerf everything. Yeah, the vigor. They nerf that all vigor nerf like right? everything. Yeah, that yeah. was kind of. I I think right now there's just there's just too many ways to get one shot. You know, it's which is just it feels bad. Yeah, it's not it's not really fun. You know, I mean even even like. Not even from from like our point of view, like from someone who doesn't play PvP a lot, like who goes in just to like do a game or two, right? Just like do some rank queues. Like it's, I feel like if you're trying to encourage people to play PvP, having like eighty percent of the classes be able to just one shot you, and like some of them out of stealth, you know, it it feels it doesn't feel great, and I think that would definitely turn some people away from from trying to play PvP and get into it a little bit more. Now, from so someone I, who usually sits on the sidelines of PvP, um, I, I usually hear people complain that like the meta is too tanky. And that, like, do you think this is really better matters. or worse than the Bunker? only the only tanky class at the moment? I think is Firebrand, and it's not even that tanky. Because I, I always hear that. I always hear like, oh, Bunker destroyed PvP. Bunker destroyed PvP. Well, Bunker did. Then, but not it now. did. Chrono Bunker did destroy PvP twice, but it's not good anymore. Right? So, they so nerfed this it, is so like. It's... It's not is this like the other side of the coin, the other extreme, basically? Like it's now it's too bursty before it was too tanky. I the thing Ooh. is, so like I prefer it being more bursty than too tanky because I think it's it's a lot more interesting to see. Like if I was like shout casting a PvP game, right, and and all the classes were bunkers and like no one was dying and the game went down to timer, you know, you didn't win off of hitting five hundred points, you won off of timer. Like I think that would be a lot worse than saying, okay, he's dead, he's dead, he, you know, these guys are getting one shot, you know. But mm-hmm. either way, there's just not really a lot of counterplay, like what we were touching on before, and it's it's not enjoyable. It's not necessarily healthy for the game mode. Mm-hmm. Um, like the judge says, burst play makes it more fast paced, and that's better. It's better than being slow paced, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's good overall. Yeah. Um, I definitely would not say there's a bunker meta right now. No way. I mean, again, yeah, I think I wasn't saying that, 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 that there's a bunker. Oh no, no, right I know. I'm just saying that usually that is the complaint. Like usually that seems to be the problem. That things are too tanky, and now it's like the the opposite. Yeah. That's a hundred percent a complaint. Yeah, it's it's just that right. Yeah, no, right now it's not. The only the only class that really could be considered a bunker, and again, I wouldn't even consider it a bunker is Firebrand. 
Um, there's there's like clashes that can like hold one v ones and stalemate a lot, mm -hmm. uh, but there's nothing really that bunkers on the node. I would say. Yeah, Firebank cannot bunker shit. It yeah. actually. I mean, it, it never really has been a bunker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's what I like about Firebank is it. They yeah. found like the balance where it gives really good. Like it, it can sustain yeah. others better than it sustains itself. Which is why, yeah. like sometimes, like you know, the thief will want to steal the Firebank because you kill them, then boom, yeah, everyone's exactly. dead. I mean, uh, I, I, don't think, I don't think the meta is even like. I think it's only ranked, right? Because people want to play. It's just because of like how like the skill, the the general mm -hmm. skill level most people are at. You want to play something that has high mobility and kills things fast in ranked. You don't care yeah. about support. You don't care about like having a proper team fight, having proper one v oneers or whatever. You just want to kill shit fast, and that's how you win ranked. And that, I think that's what most people see. But in terms yeah. of ATs, like if people that do cast ATs, they don't they don't see that level of like burst. They, to them, it's like okay, you know, there's there's the side noter, there's the mesmer, there's the team fight, and then there's the thief or rev, right? So it it yeah. it, it is balanced there, but in terms of ranked, it's just ridiculous because people just want to get the quick kills because they know that's how you win. It's kind of funny because I think there was a lot of there was a there was a pretty long point where it felt like the competitive sort of tier was really bad, but now it's kind of I think it's better, um, and I think it's. It's it doesn't need as much change. Yeah, it's getting better. They're slowly chipping away at Necro. They've been chipping away yeah. at uh, Hollow slowly. Yeah. Uh, Warrior. And honestly, I really Spurs don't mind that ranked queues are, again, sort of unorganized, and you just have a bunch of burst class because it's just ranked queues. Like you know, you go in, you one shot some people, you farm some pugs. Like all right, great. <laughs> what more do you, what more <laughs> no, do you need? It, it's in my opinion, yeah. I it's more important that it's balanced for the competitive level, right? Uh, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. That's always going to be. Uh, the kind of the priority with regards now, to how the balance should be. Now we just actually need opinion, stuff yeah. to happen in the competitive mode, like some tournaments. Eh? Yeah, yeah well, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. I would almost like say the counter argument. Like, is it really worth to 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 balance around competitive play in a game that yeah. has so little competitive play currently, or is it? Well, yeah, you have I think so. you have all the more people um, into it, basically. I think the better? UGOs will come back, and I think that I hope ArenaNet has some sort of plans. I mean, again, if they continue to make the competitive play better and. I mean, there's already. I mean, again, Duo Q came back this with this patch, right? With this season, and I think there's a lot more. Oh, yeah. people playing, Right, there's a lot more people queuing ranked, in my opinion. The games okay. are a lot better um, than they have been the last few seasons, in my opinion. Again, and I'm not like a pro PvP player or something, right? So I could be wrong, but and we have to ask Naru about this. But uh, I I think that right now PvP is better than it has been in the last few seasons. Um, yeah, maybe not for necessarily. Sure. Yeah, like some classes, maybe still need balance change and stuff, but. I do think that if they continue like this, I think that ATs are going to see more um, population. I think the monthly AT is going to be more competitive. Uh, and I think, I think I really hope that they they have some sort of plans for some sort of tournaments like with PvP in the future, but I'm sure the UGO will come back. So there you go. Mm, yeah. Uh, duo queue is definitely good for, um, yeah, for the population, right? I, people like to queue with, um, uh, with a friend and being able to have more influence over the game is probably something that people enjoy. I think that's one of the complaints. People are like, well, can't do anything. Just go in and just I get, mean, yeah, get I, I have already played more games this season than I probably have in the last three combined yeah. because, and I've, I've been playing on all my accounts. Like I, you know, I've, I have three accounts and I play on all of them now. And it's because I have people to queue with and it's, it's a lot more enjoyable. Mm, There's more yeah. games. You get queues pops faster sometimes, you know? And I mean, there are still, there's by no means, <laughs> are they're not still the same issues with pvp like there are still people running some very strange things uh i've seen i saw core necro uh i saw warriors okay. with bubble uh well you know i saw core staff guardians but you know it, these issues it definitely resolve, feels though. better with a higher yeah. population stuff like that resolves yeah. like as you yeah. stretch out the ratings right yeah. and there's more people playing there's more people at all the different ratings mm -hmm. that, that more evens people out, stream right? as well yeah you have more it, streamers for it that it kind of evens out it it makes it a bit more it makes it a bit more fun for everyone probably a lot less frustrating as well um but as a duo you are going to see higher win rates right if you look for example at the guys at the top of the leaderboard you're going to be seeing a very high win rates and of course not everyone's going to obtain these win rates but in general if you if you queue up with someone else and you're not actual trash you're going to be able to influence the game a lot more than just as a as a solo queue player so i think that's going to make the ranked experience a lot less frustrating for people yeah uh, well yeah. On the other hand, though, like if you if you if you only solo queue, you might you might kind of get screwed because. But that's, what... uh, I mean, come on. Not necessarily in... either, because you you if you solo queue, like you will run it, like you'll get paired with duos, like it happens a lot. Yeah. Mm. Plus, so, especially I, I in hate, prime. I really hate that. Like it, it, this is an MMO. It's you're not. It's not an RPG. I mean, it is, but it's not you know a single player mm. game. 
obviously if you want to play solo you can but then you can't complain when other people want to play with people it's just it doesn't make any sense to me yeah it's, yeah. it's a social game it's you're supposed to be playing with people i wouldn't play this game if i had to be playing alone all the time That's fair. And, yeah. Well, and it, people people that run around in world versus world that don't aren't in guilds and then say that it's not fair because like people are in guilds it's like well join a guild <laughs> you know the, it's the the only issue is that i've seen quite a lot of people saying that um you'll you'll occasionally get like two duos versus five yeah, that, complete randoms like, but that's there, that's matchmaking you yeah need, you know there are a few issues there because especially especially if you have two highly skilled duos versus five mm -hmm. randoms like you're always going to yeah. have a really bad oh, yeah. time versus that like, i mean know. i the one the the biggest problem for me this season has been a lot of games are stomps one mm. way or the other either i'm getting absolutely destroyed yeah. and there's nothing i can do about it or i'm just running people over and it's 500 zero for me I, i've had a couple games that have been close and really fun like that like i'm actually trying really hard to win i have to like think about what i'm doing but i've more 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 than not it's it's either games that I give up after a minute because there's nothing you can do, or it's games where I basically AFK and just price one and we win. Yeah, and that's I think I don't I don't know exactly what I saw. I think again, once you have more population coming in, you know that that should help. And you know when people start, you know playing more meta builds, they learn how to play PvP rotations and all that. You know they learn when to take one v ones, when not to, you know stuff like that. Then it's you're gonna you need to give them incentive first. Yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah, duo's gonna fix yeah. anything like. Duo well, just duo will increase population, fun, but... but you need you need yeah. more than duo for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. You can't just have duo queue and then be like, all right, PvP's fixed. That's no. I mean, I know Ben said they have like a good reward system that's coming in with the whole like you reach mm -hmm. a tier and then you get rewarded for that, which I do think is for the general population is better than titles because then yeah. you actually want to try. Like if you're a plat player, for example, and you you're you're secured in plat, you you don't care about like winning because you're not going to get anything. You're not you're never going to mm -hmm. reach rank one and get that title, but if you're a plat player and hitting legend actually gives you something really good, like a skin or something, mm. then you're actually gonna like put in that extra mile. You're gonna put a meta build. You're gonna want to find someone to do it with. You're not gonna just run stupid shit and get the pip rewards. So I think that will help. Yeah. I think, I'd right agree now, with that. I, I think okay. I'm that kind of player, and I would I would go for it more if that was the case. Yeah, they kind of fucked up because re 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 remove uh, releasing duos, but then removing titles was kind of it's kind of weird. They should have well, kept they're, yeah, they're, titles they're until. Until they, I mean, they should have kept the titles. I mean, you can ban the win traders for like one more season and then keep the titles there until you have uh, your new yeah, system I'd, in place. I'd rather I'd rather see strong, like harsher bans on win traders than remove everybody for sure. Yeah, I think that makes more sense. It, well, that uh, that is actually a bit of a prevailing attitude with uh, uh, reading it. Unfortunately, that they do tend to play it very safe with all of these things. Uh, for example, like what the reason they haven't really improved world versus world rewards is because they think they're going to get manipulated really hard, right? Um, and the reason they're removing these titles is they is they think people will abuse them, um, and it, it's kind of like yeah you you're punishing everyone just because there are a few naughty people in the game right and I, I don't know that's I, personally I don't really I don't really agree with that. that I don't think that's a very good way to do it but that is unfortunately how ArenaNet typically goes mm -hmm. with this sort of thing um, but yeah it, it's it's a real shame it's obviously quite difficult to catch all the naughty win traders okay but I, I don't know. Uh, they should put that put that effort in and cleanse those. That's still scum. Okay. Yeah, I mean, especially yeah. if it's only one more season, right? Like they, mm. I think they're targeting the new reward system for is it next season? I'm assuming because I don't think they'd want to have no rewards for two seasons in a row. That's like yeah, what, that would be a pretty bad. Four months. That would be terrible. The population. Yeah, that so you I'm got assuming it'd be next kind of season. Yeah. Um. Anyways, I blame myself. We've probably talked too much about PvP. And not enough about the rest of the balance changes because we only really talked about like what three or four classes, so engineer no, changes. It's good. It's good to get some. Uh, yeah. Some oh, for sure. I know. Get, I get like... some memes. I, I mean, I, we, kind of we, still, because... we still have two hours to talk about World versus World specifically. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we haven't got even got to that yet. No, oh, no. no. Oh, so yeah, we got a we got a long road ahead. And you know what? There is actually a really interesting. Did you see that? Uh, speaking of what, sort of very brief tangent here, guys. Okay. Um. Did you see the anniversary video, Roy? Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. you mean with all like the partners talking in yeah. it or whatever? No, yeah. I did not. Oh, that I no, 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 no. The, the anniversary they posted to, posted to YouTube where Mike Z is talking about. Um, oh no! Just, I didn't just watch the oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, right? That. Okay, Mike Z said the word. Okay, and not the one that Jeff uses a lot. Okay, he said GVG, Roy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no, it was a bit. It was a bit amusing. 
Uh, but yeah, he, did, they, did they, he have a stroke? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he, oh, I gotta he, watch his video. He, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> he, he was talking about how they like to support um, game modes that players come up with, G, oh. and then he said GVG. Oh, right? okay. So he was just he was just memeing. Just oh, the edge of the mist. The edge of the mist. That was kind of cool. I, well, it, the, uh, the video, the video sure. was kind of a meme in in certain ways. They they talked about yeah, like we we're gonna you know we're really looking to we're really focusing on our raid and fractal guys. Okay. Uh, we, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, and then that's, they. That's <laughs> not evident, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, Two hundred seventy-eight days, by the way. Yeah. So there, there was that was. Wait, there are raids in this game? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, oh. there's GVG in this game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so no. I don't know. That was that was kind of interesting. That, that, a really great, <laughs> really great video. Actually, I would highly recommend watching all of the the videos and listening to the interviews. Uh, Tiba, you that, just um, baited me so hard, it. dude. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you, you got baited. You got wrecked. Okay, you got wrecked. But anyway, engineer. Um, they, they, I love this. Okay? okay, so I think the biggest meme of this patch was overcharged. Yes, shot this is a this is a oh, mega. Yeah. Meme. <laughs> this is We're a giant. Joking. Joking. All right, all right, all right. So first of all, it was bugged for a few weeks. It was fifteen hundred range, and it still said six hundred, right? And then it got changed to twelve hundred range intentionally. But why would you ch why would you increase the range on overcharge shot? That doesn't make any sense for engineer. It, like it doesn't make any sense. First of all, it's already yeah. a really strong skill, but you, it means that the engineer can't follow up on the knockback. <laughs> like it knocks it away from the engineer, and they can't follow. Up. It doesn't. Yeah, it's good. That perma stab now. That's the thing, though. That's I don't, the, that's I the don't entire meme. Is when they. It's funny because when they bugged it, right? We're all like joking. We're like, watch them yeah. just make this baseline, and they actually yeah. did. Like they yeah. actually increased the range and made, just kept it that way. Which is yeah. kind of ridiculous, especially since you buffed Elixir U. Now they have near perma quickness and stab. So. The reason that skill is so strong, like th the reason it was so strong, is because you knock yourself back too for a little shorter duration than they get knocked back, but that no longer happens because of Corona. Now and you just all this don't stuff. get knocked yeah. back. Huh? Now you just now you just have this really ridiculously strong CC along with all your other CCs from mm. the thing with Hard Light Arena, your Prime Light Beam, like it's and sh uh, the Shockwave, like it's just too much along with like the Perma Quickness. Like Hollow right now is probably like it. Not only is it the best Puck Stomper in ranked, it is also like the strongest side noter in um in like competitive which is mm. i think is a problem like it definitely they definitely needed to tone down that <clears throat> the quickness up time some of the stab corona needs like a cooldown increase i don't know they didn't they didn't do any of the changes that that should have put it in line more with warrior because they didn't uh with warrior and um as because they nerfed the vigor which was big for mesmer and they nerfed rousing which was kind of big for warrior but they didn't really do much to hollow which is kind of mm -hmm. tragic yeah what about for what about for pve is is hollow still good uh, yeah, 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 Hollow is still really good. Like the only thing they did, which was quite unusual for for PVE, is that they just they just nerfed Condi NG and Condi Hollow for no reason. Yeah, like, the, the, I think you. I think that the reason for that is that they and and maybe this is just speculation, right? But I feel like um, they saw Condi Hollow becoming a thing, and I think they just didn't want that. I think they just wanted Hollow to stay a power class, purity and... of purpose. Yeah, exactly. And rather than like um, reworking the class yet, yeah, they probably just didn't have the resources. Or they just didn't have that on the table right now. They just saw, okay, Connie Hall is coming up. We want to do something against that. But we are still working on all this other stuff, so we can't completely rework uh, Core Condi right now. Um, so they just kind of nerfed it so Condi Holo wouldn't be become too big a thing. And it would go back to Power Holo. And maybe there they have something for the future. That's what I would maybe speculate might have been the reason behind this. Um, then why nerf Condi NG though as well, like base Condi NG? Yeah, exactly. That's just I I, I can just Collateral assume that damage, this huh? might be because they're thinking well at least it's not Condi Hollow. They and they're they're thinking it, they just couldn't rework it, it better right now because they had other things on their plate. That's what I would think. Yeah. And maybe they're gonna do something about it in the future. And they just wanted to do like a, you know, like they just wanted to hit the break quickly to make it not like go too far. I don't know. Yeah. That would be the only reason that would make sense to me that they would didn't want Condi Holo to be a thing yeah. for purity of purpose reasons. Not a lot of changes there, with certainly with regards to PVE, just some minor stuff. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, well, and in, in PVP, like yeah, as, as we're saying, like they just turned the CC spam down a little bit, right? And I guess they made Hollow Leap do less damage, but it's still yeah, I don't pretty really good. Think Nothing, nothing really different with Hollow. Yeah, nothing too different. Or, no. or NG in general. I, I do think that one of the things that I don't particularly like about Path of Fire in general, like, is the massive amount of CC spam, I suppose. So I guess this is good. 
I think a lot of classes still do this, like basically all of them actually. I like just spam CC really hard. Um, I, I don't know. I think it's really cancerous, but I don't, I, I don't, it's pretty difficult. Like it's it's kind of ingrained into so many of the classes. Like Hollow just inherently does this. Like Scourge does this as well. Like even Firebrand has a lot of CC spam on it, really. Um, Spellbreaker like spam CC really hard. I don't know. It's it's very it's it's pretty annoying. It's pretty annoying if you ask me. But I don't know. That's just how it goes. Uh, for, for World vs. World, like, uh, what, some classes are quite unhappy in World vs. World. And although NG yeah. does have a build that's kind of good, it does have the, the heal scrapper build, which is pretty strong. It's, uh, it's, pretty, it's about, pretty good. It's um, pretty good. Come on. It's not that bad, right? It's not that bad. I would say Hollow is better to run in World vs. World as a damage class, honestly. Yeah. Scrapper. Did the gyro changes affect anything on Scrapper? I, I don't haven't really heard anything on this. I just saw gyro so. changes. And like I don't. I don't think Scrapper is really that good. I mean, I you're not going to use it in GVG. Like, a lot of people thought maybe you could use it because the reveal got buffed, but, like, if you're just taking it for the reveal, it's pretty pointless, especially because reveal can just be countered pretty easily. And at the end of the day, it's not really going to matter that much. And then in World vs. World, I really just don't think Heal Scrapper is that good. I mean, it, it you can run it, right? You can run it as a build to like sort of mess around on and whatever, have fun on Heal Scrapper, but I just don't think it's better than Tempest or Firebrand or maybe even Ventari Rev. Uh, and your uh, Hollow, I think Hollow is a pretty good DPS option in, in World vs. World, not in GVG necessarily. Uh, but yeah, I, I just don't see Scrapper being good. And that's that is a problem. Like, I think I think it would be cool to see Scrapper come back because you know, got, got your little gyros running around, yeah, little bots. Yeah, and and like what Ruggers saying, they 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 did you know they did change the uh, gyros a little bit right with this patch. So maybe they're trying to bring Scrapper back a bit. Maybe they're trying to start looking you know look towards towards buffing it again. Mm. But yeah, yeah. I, I suppose that is, I mean that is a that is a sad thing. But it it's it's kind of like World versus what is kind of like the, the final frontier for class balance, right? There's um it's just it, it feels like the medium classes do still get left out a little bit. Um, but I don't know. Hopefully that will. What do you think it would take, right, f to see like some actual proper like large scale play of, uh, say, Hollow Smith, right, or something? Right? You would you would run you would, where where would you want to run a lot of Hollow Smiths, right? How how would that be possible? I mean, again, I think I think it's fine in open field for World of World and blob fights. I think it does a lot of damage. If see if you run that, fifty of them and you just spam a fact. Well, okay, no. Because <laughs> then you would just die in bubbles easy. and you wouldn't have stability and you wouldn't have enough healing and you wouldn't have corrupts <laughs> like uh, no, like three, two, one, everybody laser, fifty yeah. people at the same time. Uh, That'll be good. That'll be great. Yeah, except then you're dead because you're in six hundred range and uh, no. It doesn't uh, matter, they're a seed. That is seed. That oh you're they're right. Yes, there's no stability. Right. Yeah, they're gone for at least five seconds. Yeah. No. I, I think Hollow's fine in open field versus but I think that's about it. I mean, maybe it would be good in GVG, I don't, but I don't think so. Uh, but for large scale, I think Hollow is fine. I think Scrapper needs more work in large scale than Hollow does. Mm. <laughs> Dude, Dragon Hunter, they need to buff that. Well, uh, Naro, I have got great news for you. Okay, if we scroll down did, to Guardian dude. here, look, look, check this shit out, dude. Okay, they, buff they buffed True Tell Shot me. by ten percent in PVE in only. PVE. Why? And I read that this and then I was like, weird... "Log," until I saw the PVE change. I was why? like, I was like <laughs> "Why? <laughs> why is? Why did they even do that?" That is actually just the fuck you to anyone that still plays Dragon Hunter. <laughs> it's the most random change ever. It just doesn't make. It... I don't even know why they did this. Well, you know, they wanted to increase the Dragon Hunter benchmark for PVE. Obviously, you know, maybe that's slightly uh, working towards like a, a, a longbow. And then hunter, maybe it's what baby steps. Uh, It'll be like three years before that happens. The <laughs> defender's dogma change is pretty significant, though. Like, so when you block, you can get your F one back right quick, way quicker. But the thing is, you don't oh, get yeah, the pull. The, you don't yeah, get the pullback, right? You don't get the pullback way quicker. I actually haven't played with it. I don't even know how it works right now. I know. I it think that's a big cool change, though. When you yeah, block, it, it, awesome. it takes three seconds off the F one cooldown. But I'm not sure if it's um. Um, but oh, oh oh but not but only once every three seconds so it basically it, yeah you have to block every three seconds you'll it will remove three seconds from the cooldown so i guess it's okay but mm -hmm. I, it, you won't get your pullback because it's on a separate cooldown so it's no good feels bad i guess it's rip i think that's a pve change yeah. i think that's a that's that's aimed to reduce yeah. the cooldown when you have one so you yeah, get yeah, more yeah. and more you're, you're right actually that, that might actually be like... yeah trying to so you can get more 10 percent mods so i guess it's like a slight buff to dh and pve actually I mean, since you already kind of like, yeah. you can actually like kind of use your blocks offensively in a way now. Like, you can like time this with like F3s and, and Aegis's and, and, mm. and, and shares and oh. stuff. 
you know, yeah, Sigurdal's right here, you know. It is good for Staff Staff, Dragon Hunter. You guys remember that time when uh, Valen lost 1v1 to Staff Staff, Dragon Hunter? I remember that, okay? What? I remember that. In Mystic Builds, okay? That was, was where he did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. He did, yeah. How'd he die? Yeah. <laughs> he, he just kept... He, the, the F1s kept landing. So Sigurdal was playing, like, some kind of weird... He, he got a terrible build, and I believe his, his, his character name was If you lose you uninstall or something like that okay and he actually beat two people well he beat he beat he got through the first round of mystic builds he defeated a warrior with staff staff dragon hunter then he killed valon he, he didn't beat he didn't beat valon he took a round off valon okay valon wow. was playing a thief build and then sigurdal had staff staff dragon hunter and all he was doing was like, trying to burn him right trying to burn him with the f1 then he would slowly die and slowly bleed out and there you go it happened there you go. Staff, staff, dragon Valen hunter. exposed. It, yeah, sure. Valen is exposed. Okay, <laughs> six years of thief experience wasn't enough. It just, it just wasn't. Most enough. knowledgeable thief didn't yeah. have enough knowledge to dodge <laughs> the one skill. <laughs> oh dear. He was right. Batman. Yeah. So, warrior. Warrior. Well, warrior is 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 AIDS, and they nerfed it a bit. That's that's all that happened there, really. What what do you, I, I would like to hear the PvP uh, opinion on this. I heard a lot that Warrior has too much passive stuff, and like, how do you think about like the active changes to the sickness? Like, they buffed the active abilities of the sickness pretty significantly, didn't they? Yeah, they, they did, but they didn't really. They nerf rousing resilience, and this trait I mean, was like the big problem. But like, well, I mean, I'm really hyped about the ri the rifle changes. Dude. One that I found really strong. Oh, yeah, the rifle changes. Yeah, is that being played? Is that at all a thing in PvP? Oh yeah, dude, you only see rifle warriors now. Oh okay, <laughs> I see. I see. <laughs> Finally, is fucking shit, Ajax. Dude. Ajax <laughs> uh, is unleashed, dude. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. buffed Ajax. Yeah, they did. Probably... They did. They buffed it a fair amount as well, right? Like twenty five percent, thirty three percent. Yeah, and, but, and, no, I don't, I don't really think Warrior is any different after this. Yeah, it's I mean, about, I think it's, it's, I think it's maybe a little, yeah. maybe a little worse, but I don't really think it's. Any well, different. The, the rousing I think it's more change. hollow, not getting nerfed. That kind of hurts Warrior over, more than Warrior actually getting yeah. nerfed. The, the yeah. rousing change is, is is fairly significant, right? Like twenty percent reduced healing and half the duration uh, of one K toughness. I don't think so. I, I think I mean, that's what people not... thought at first, but you have four stun breaks, so I don't think it's that. I don't. Right? Yeah, I don't really think it's. it's actually, um, I was asking boys about it and he was saying it doesn't really change much i mean obviously yes it's a little bit worse but it you still have a ton of healing yeah, it's not at like the end of the world right it's not it's not the end of the world it's still yeah it's still it's still really good hmm. um i just yeah i don't i don't really think anything really gets changed with with warrior that much um yeah they should rework rousing like I, I think it should be completely reworked you shouldn't get rewarded like i mean if i cc a warrior why should they get rewarded for that that's kind of weird i yeah. feel like it's it's a it's a weird mechanic to have but it is what it is. Yeah, not crazy changes. The signet changes are kind of cool, um, especially with rifle. You can just charge up that rifle shot with the signet fury, and boom! Rifles, rifles. and boom! Get that one shot combo. It's yeah. it's almost like they kind of see these meme builds. Damage increase yeah. to brutal shot. What is that even? I don't even know. What that it, that's the is. dodgy back one with the immobilize. The four. Oh. Yeah. The dodgy. Yeah. I don't think it really does a lot of damage. Now. I don't think it does <laughs> don't a lot. So. Does it? Well, now it does 100 percent more. Now, now it does 100 percent. 100 of one Whoa. is only one. So I mean, insane, what you... absolutely uh, insane. Yeah. So warrior, you... all right, whatever. Who cares about warrior? Uh, thief. Thief. Well, Dagger storm. Da the, <laughs> this is a big meme. Okay, this was a sleeper change, dude. Okay, look at this. Yeah. The skill now grants evade. So when you do yeah. dagger storm, you have like a well, four second evade. Where did that come evade. from? Like, I... this is a this. I is mean, a hey, big meme. you know what? It was never used and now it's used, so I guess I guess they did something. Yeah, well, right? I mean it wasn't really useful before, was it? Because of that. Like it just I mean, I didn't play again, I'm not a great PvP player, but I felt like it would be terrible to run that spell because as soon as you'd use it, somebody would drop an AoE on you or something and kill you. And you'd kind yeah, of be a sit and duck, right? Yeah. This is a this is a good meme though, okay? I like this. You can now you can just go crazy. You can go crazy yeah. all over the place. But spinning. I mean around. again, I I just don't really think Thief gets much change again um and anything i mean I've, i don't really know about pve i'm not sure is the spider venom poison duration has been reduced from six to four seconds is now I, is, is Thief now not good in pv because I, I think that was again a purity of purpose change because yeah. dead ice used to run this um yeah. and it was already kind of not good anymore people already ran the the the, the, the other shadow segment. shadow step segment and um but I think they saw this and they thought, ah, this is supposed to be a Connie spell, but it's still good. It's still the best in slot on power. That's not something we want. And 
reducing this, which I, I'm a little bit, I don't know. I'm a little bit sad for Condi Daredevil, but it didn't, it's not like this is like a class breaking change or anything. But um, I think that's, I, I think that's again, that was their thought behind this a bit yeah. more purity of purpose to make this not be run on Dead Eye. Make sure that the signet is worth over this. Mm. Yeah. And then they, like, uh... and yeah, of course it is a nerf to the Condi Thief. Uh, built in PV as well. I mean, it's it's fairly significant as well. I mean, it's, it's a pretty harsh nerf, but I don't know. I don't think that's really that bad. I think I think they'll live. Right? I think it'll survive. You can still play them. Like... And, and yeah, again, I, I just don't think Thief has really changed at all in either of the competitive modes. So, um, so finally, Ranger, we got some dagger buffs. Uh, <laughs> but th this is so weird. I the the logic here is quite unusual. Yeah. So they buffed the power damage. On yeah, dagger. somebody told me about that. As it's actually somebody tested this, and this is actually it's almost as good as sword now as a power weapon. It's like two hundred DPS less or something if you rent dagger instead of sword on in PVE on a golem rotation. Um, but it's 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 intended to be a condi weapon, right? It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Doesn't, why it's do you do this? Weird. Replace one power weapon that's already good with like another main hand weapon that's and, and make it do the same thing i don't i don't see the reason yeah it's, it's I, I mean, honestly, this it really is, is this is probably like the most disappointing part of the whole patch for me just because ranger has not been used in world of this world for a really mm. long time i mean in heart of thorns druid was decent yeah but it got pretty much shut out of the meta after a while um and i just don't think ranger's been used there's a butterfly in your room teapot I, yes, there is. There, there is a yeah. There is a beautiful oh. insect here. I was like, I was like, am I seeing things? Interesting. No, nope, the insect uh, has begun to interfere. Uh, you um, know what almost triggers me about this is that shortbow has been such a meme in PVE for such a long time on Soul Beasts by now, and that like, and instead of tackling all the obvious things to make to make dagger an extra like the significantly better weapon, basically to make something like shortbow shortbow be at least noticeably worse. Than, than Dagger. Uh, there's so many things they could have done, and they like. Well, Reem is telling me that it has kind of done that, and it's made Dagger significantly better, or fa a fair has bit it? better. Yeah. A little bit, maybe. I, I'm, I mean, I haven't really tested it myself, but it's like this. There's such obvious ways. There's like, there's trades like Light on Your Feet that are just busted for short bow. There's generally short bow is just, in my opinion, busted. But, mm. uh, I, but why would you, out of all the things that you can change, on a Condi weapon to make it more competitive with other Condi weapons. They want Change more the hybrid power classes. Ratio. All right, they want every class to run Selly. <sighs> I don't even think they thought too much about it. I, I'm pretty sure they were like, oh, the numbers on this are low. Let's just up yeah. them to make it this, seem like we actually did something in Ranger. But they really it kind of seems mm -hmm. like they put a lot of work into some classes and not really. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's what I don't and, like about, like, at least yeah. Ellie and Ranger in PvP, because those are kind of, mm. like, right now the two classes that are that have, have been the bottom yeah. two since... And they still um, are. ...since Battle I mean, of Fire. Like, just give them buffs, you know? Just buff yeah. them, and then if they're too good, just nerf nerf them slowly. Kind of like what you're doing with Warrior, Hollow, Mesmer. Yeah. Because I would hate to I main mean, I think I think Boyce can play uh, Ranger pretty well in PvP, and about... That's, I mean, like, maybe, like, 360, and that's about it. Like, it's just... Yeah, and again, it's the same with World of World. You don't really see your Ranger at all, and I don't think there's any yeah. situation where Ranger's good, whether it's Core, Druid, or Soul Beast in GVG or yeah. large scale. I mean, Roman, Roman, right? Roman, like, but yeah, a but really strong class in PvP for a long time, right? And like one of the classes oh, that people complain well, they just about. Delete, they just deleted Druid. It was Druid, so anti-fun. Yeah, Druid though. was. What do you want to say? Yeah, Druid was terrible. Druid should have yeah. been nerfed. Honestly, it was, it was utter was, cancer. It was terrible. Pure yeah. anti-fun yeah. class. I know. Yeah. I played it. I became yeah. top 250. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never yeah. played. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I want to see? And I, I've said this on many T times. It's gonna say it again. And it's gonna say it forever. Okay. Right. In world versus world, like Soul Beast should be the new guardian, boys. Okay. Or at least stability. At least stability. The chances should... aren't that good. They're just yeah. not. That yeah, good. but they should it, be good. Like, yeah. I know. Yeah, exactly. They, they need to be buffed. They like, I want to the... see. I want to yeah. see a buff. Hell, to it. skill split it. Like, if they're really worried about other gamers, like, just buff it in world versus world. Just make Cause... the stances really good. Because they have some cool effects, right? So, for example, you're immune to all the immobilite, you're immune to chill, immune to cripple, mm -hmm. and immobilize, which is, that's pretty, that's pretty good, right? Especially There's since it's unremovable. But, oh, I don't no. know. I, I just feel like there's just not the, I mean, it's shit compared to Guardian. That's the problem, I, right? I, when, I found when it them comes just... to Soul Beast. Way too high cooldown as well. Like they're too short and they're way too high cooldown. Mm. Like you, you basically you can pop them in your first 
push basically yeah. and then you don't have them for like 20 seconds it's, the rest of the fight so, it's so beast actually does do a decent bit of damage but it just doesn't bring anything else and if they buff stances you might see people you know being able to bring them because it, if you're just taking it for pure damage there's stuff that's much better to take because warriors probably will have dps and obviously they bring bubble and boon rip and cc and all this stuff and uh revenant again same thing uh and, they're and also i mean but and, you know, stances are so obviously awesome. like like not intended to be like a, a damage mechanic like half of the right. stances are like utility based and then there's yeah. like one or two that are you know there's there's so much to be done with this that like reducing it to a damage class would actually not do it justice right. as well like when i talk about world versus world i'm not talking about roaming okay for all the people in chat i don't care about roaming, uh, ro right? ro roaming wow. is, is a big meme right. i know look, this is I, look, i'm not saying okay. it's roamers, roamers ro roaming okay? is just a meme but i just don't i don't care about i don't roam i haven't roamed in a really long time roaming is mostly dead in world versus world and i just don't care about it and if you balance around roaming oh I think no, that's god no no ooh. so no, I oof. don't. I don't. What about scatting? Shut up. So I don't. Rays, I'm not talking nice. about roaming. Oh, okay. Like if I was talking about roaming, then I would say mirages are amazing. But you don't run mirages in in yeah. in, in, in large scale or GVG either. All right. I'm not talking about roaming. Like, yes, there are a lot of rangers mm. in World of Warcraft. That doesn't mean there should be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're bad. There's just no point. Roy beating the Pepos. I, I'm more like beating the roamers, I guess. But yeah. it's just like there's uh, only ten of them, Roy. Yeah, there's dozens of us. Okay. Wow. It's so toxic. So toxic. It's not wrong though. I mean, look, I, I, don't I see used to roam. I legitimately used to roam, but it's just it's dead. It, it just doesn't like it's dead. I think Somewhere you're mistaken. Yeah. just started crying. They're all just <laughs> memers, you know. If you play Dead Eye or like One Shot Ranger, and you're just in stealth and you one shot someone, uh, you're not a roamer. You're a memer. Okay, you're just yeah. there to meme. <laughs> okay, because because roaming is act like it's pretty dead. I, I'm. Yeah, it's very dead. Roy killed Roy, yeah, dude. Wow, Roy. Ruining roaming, huh? Okay. This is my bad, bro. so toxic, Roy. You are I was so like, toxic. I was like, I can't get all 60 of my Zerglings in the map. I need to get less people. Get these roamers out, out, of, out of here. Fuck off, roamers, yeah. all right? Go to Edge of the Mist with that shit. All right. I want to get my 50 scourges in here, dude. Yeah, let's yeah. get that shit. Okay, I want to get my massive <laughs> group in here. Dude, roaming good. dies 2018? No, roaming died in 2014. Probably <laughs> no, 2013, no. honestly. 2014 roaming was popping, bro. Well, yeah, but I, then it died. No, <laughs> then it just went. Like, it was but like... anyway, I, it, it's just a case of like Solbeast needs something to compete with. It, well, the stances well, I mean, just need to be made so they can compete or, with the other good supports, right? Yeah. Then, it, then it can be good. Or make Druid good again. Like, I, I no, I, I just don't like. I mean, Dr I, well, you don't like Druid. I don't know. I mean, I Druid. Don't, is, I mean, Druid I don't, is... don't buff it to the point where it gets to be like where it was before. Do it, I'm obviously in PvP, but in World vs. World, I think it was. It was. I mean, it almost wasn't good enough to be used, so that's fine, you know. You know what? Yeah, you it was do? good in World War World, not in PvP. Okay, so for Druid, you know what you do? Okay, you just make it. So delete um, it. Well, no, you probably you probably fix some of the cooldowns because I think the cooldowns have just just got wrecked quite a lot. Okay, but you know what you do? Okay, simple. You just make the AOE on Celestial Shadow really fucking huge. Okay, <laughs> so that means you have a Zerg. Okay, well, you, you don't have a Zerg, but you have like you have fifteen people, you have a Druid in each subgroup, and you just stealth and restart. You just you just vanish in super speed every fifteen seconds. Fucking hype, dude! Holy yeah. shit! Think how much Yo, of a meme uh, that would be. Like, imagine if you stealth up every fifteen seconds. Like your entire your entire group goes invisible every fifteen seconds. You run around. Okay, Teapot, you should not bounce. <laughs> oh, I think I get that would be. Um, <laughs> That'd be such and, a good meme. Uh, Angeline, listen, dude, I'm not telling you you yeah. can't roam, dude. If you want to roam, oh. more power to you. I, I'm just saying, I don't. I personally I don't care about it. I'm not, I'm not talking about roaming. Right. So it, roaming is fine. If you want to roam, great. Have fun. Good luck. I hope you I hope you gank a lot of people. All right. Even though it's annoying as yeah. shit. But anyways, I, I thought that would be such a good strat. That would be so, that would be so, uh, so much fun. To, to I would be you. awful. Well, it would I mean, be amazing. It would, I guess it would be, it would be, be good sick. against... Uh, pin snipe, but... Yeah, I think... I, I don't know. I just feel like that would be a really fun gimmick that only Druid could really pull off. Um, yeah, like when, with, with a lot of... They nerf Celestia up down very hard. Um, and they introduce yeah. a lot of power creep. Like it, it just can't really compete anymore in a, in a world versus world context. I don't know. So that, I mean, it didn't also be... one of the one of the strongest um, skills that that Druid brought to like GVG specifically was search and rescue, and it's yeah. really buggy. It's really buggy. So that yeah. needs to be fixed. Search and rescue was great. I mean, it was it was basically transfusion on Ranger, but it, I think it's a, it has a bigger radius. I think. So um, I, think, I believe it has a nine hundred range from a six hundred yeah. range of transfusion. And, so. and uh, but it's just really buggy. So yeah, if they weird. if they if they fix that, then that would be really cool because that would be another functionality that Druid would bring to GVG. Well, or or Ranger, right? In general, right? Or you know, Ranger, you know, general. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ranger general, yeah. He's yeah. so beast. There yeah. you go.
So that'll be good. I, mean, I, I would definitely love to see some some buffs to, to Ranger because Rangers are discriminating against guys in World Bus as well. They're just not allowed. Not allowed to see oh, them. Kick them out of the squad. They, they, I mean, I think since like a year before Heart of Thorns, they just, they were bad. Yeah. Like you used to run them in focus parties sometimes, but, you know, and obviously Druid was used, but again, other than that, it's just like, I think Ranger is probably the most discriminated class in Mortal World. Yeah, and the worst. Well, so. it, it's also kind of the, the class that a lot of of newer players play as well. Right? Like, oh, ranger! It's like, mm. it, oh, it, dude. It, my first, yeah, my first class in Guild Wars One was a ranger. Dude. It's not the most like, it's almost, because it's, people it, love you pets. You get to charm a pet. You yeah, people sit. love pets. They love cute yeah. animals. Okay, that's just what people like. I'm just saying yeah. that's just what it is. People just love yeah. those cute animals. But then the pet is basically useless. It yeah. does nothing. Yeah, uh, but that, that's kind of why Soul Beast with this golden opportunity, right, Roy? Because yeah. suddenly you have. Um, you have the ability to remove this dumbass AI that just runs in and dies uh, in in these Zerg contexts. So if you have a, a good soul beast, well, if you have uh, have a soul beast that build that can work, then you can kind of get away from you can get away from the pet, right? And and get some other utility. I don't know. They just need to like massively increase the support it gives, and then just reduce the corners on everything. Make the stances way better. So you, you think it should open. be a support role, not a, D, a DPS role or um, DPS and utility? Yeah, I think stance share kind of makes it so it could be. It could be a support, and I also think that Guardian should have an alternative, right? Um, or at oh, least yeah. the stability component of it, because I mean, right. I mean Guardian has been best in well, slot for stability since day one. Right? You want, you want, you want to make something uh, sort of replace Guardian, give something a lot of AOE stun breaks. Well, because yeah, what, yeah, why not? That's what that's what Firebrand is so good at. Well, yeah, the man well, something well Firebrand doesn't have. Because I feel like competing with Firebrand is going to be rough right now. The, sta the stances. I think the stances but, genuinely have utility yeah. that Firebrand doesn't compete yeah. with exactly. I mean, Firebrand has resistance, yeah. right? But the the stances are unremovable, which is really valuable. So if you if you put up the stance, I can't remember which one it is. It's like, the, is it the Griffin stance or something? Or is it the Dolyak? Wow. Is it the Dolyak? No, it's a Dolyak stance, That's right? Cool. Like the Dolyak, Dolyak stance gives some AoE stance. stability. And I believe it gives you immunity to all... Um, Immunity to some of to oh you know what uh, you know what they stuff, should right? you know what they should do they should give you a stance that makes it you so you can't have boons ripped there you go well it's, uh, why not though right immunity oh, to boon rip be strong but, uh, immunity to boon right yeah there, but, but, yeah, really but why 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 not have, why not have something a bit that might be a little bit overkill right? yeah that's too broken because you um, would, you would then just perma no bubbles fuck bubbles, bubbles. get them out yeah. <laughs> I think no I mean bubbles are. Kind of unhealthy right now with the size, but it should mm. definitely be in the game. Yeah, I know. well, and, and Kidder highlights another really big problem here, right? Like not having a good weapon to play a support role is is a really big problem. Yeah, uh, here True. as well. Because you have staff on Druid, but you don't have yeah. anything yeah. like that I, on. on yeah, it's the same thing with Necro. I, people actually thought that Scourge was going to be like support, and I'm like, they don't have a weapon that facilitates yeah. that, so they're just going to be damage. It's really OP, and is... support Scourge is probably the most overpowered build in PvE right now, but that's for right. other yeah, reasons. Yeah, no, you have the res, the double blood yeah. and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. but then well, still, I... the, in, for, for it to be like in PvP and World v. World, they would need like a weapon yeah, that also yeah. like, kind of like applies barrier or well, heals yeah, or like removes like conditions. I, I, think dag I think Dagger should be reworked on Necro to be a support weapon over yeah. a damage weapon. 100%. Dagger should be, be complete. It should be fully reworked into a support. And yeah. Well, on on Ranger, I think the, the alternative there kid i think it could maybe have it more as a maybe have it more towards a hybrid but what if they just like made like one pet okay has uh, say in soul beast right you go into like i don't know like blue mower or some shit right and it has a lot of very short cooldown support abilities so like the oh, pet dude, you can have five mower stands so the, so, so, really so the pet so. kind of becomes a weapon yeah. so instead of using weapons to support you you literally use the soul beast abilities as uh, all of your support abilities, right? Combined with the stances, right. like maybe you I can get like some work idea. done there. Here's an idea. All right. In World vs. World, you have all these absolutely useless NPC creatures, right? What if Soul Beast Elite Skill summoned all of them Holy to attack your shit. enemies? So you had dude, an of, stampede. of scales stampede. and bears <laughs> and get the oh amazing, God. dude. Dude, for the, right. uh, there's an elite, okay? It, it Okay, when you use the elite in a massive radius of like 10,000, it aggros all NPCs onto the enemy, dude. Holy shit. That, that oh. would be so cool, dude. Yeah. <laughs> 15k rats, yeah. Yeah, there, you remember that shit? Like the 10k rats? Think about Even it. Even like... the wyverns in the desert. Yes, yeah. yes. yes. The elite wyverns in the, de in the desert map just come out of nowhere. They fly out of the Pulls sky everything. and they kill everybody. That'd be sick. Dude. Because what, be does, sick. What, does, what does World of World need more of? PvE. Yes. 
Because Perfect. World vs. World players love PvE, okay? That's why they love, that's why they <laughs> yeah. Desert Borderland Lords. That's why we mechanics. play World vs. World, to get yeah. more PvE. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But, uh, that, I guess that kind of outline, uh, outlines what happened to Soul Beast and what the yes. problems still remain with it, right? So, like, it's better in PvE. They buffed the dagger build. So, Soul Beast Cubed... Rocker, you'll be so happy. Soul Beast Cubed is... Uh, it gets wrecked by Dagger Torch now, okay? It's... it's no, it's... it's no. It's you... shit. It's, I don't know. It's unnecessary. There's obvious things to change. Yeah, Sean Paul needs to get nerfed, in my opinion. Like, yeah. there are obvious trade choices oh, that need to so be... Oh, you're still mad at the Soul Beast Cubed? Uh, uses? I, I think I, I think light on your feet is a dumb trade. I think light on your feet is a, a trade that completely misses its purpose. Like it's a, <laughs> it, 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 there's a thought process behind light on your feet that could make it interesting, but it's like completely diminished by the fact that the passive effects of the trade are so strong. Mm. It's fair enough. And I, I, that would be like the obvious first thing I would I would tackle if I was to want to make other weapons more con competitive mm. with with shockbow. I would remove the obviously stupid tra uh, traits that it has, or like change them. Yeah. Well, fair enough. Fair enough about that, then I suppose. But yeah, wait, is that the last class? That... Those. That's all nine classes. I can't believe it, guys. We've Dude. covered every single class. Wow, we're so good at doing tea time. This yeah. is so a... now. Now we now we can talk about the novelties. Oh, oh, now, finally. <laughs> I can't like, believe this. This is such a really weird change. This uh, they randomly added this new UI feature that you can put all you can put the trumpet into your UI now, which is really cool. It's all in the wardrobe, so you don't have to carry these things around. Really great change. Quality of life, boys. I, I, I freed I up like ten bank spots. Definitely not. I, would... I mean, it's not. Of course, it's not a bad change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool it's, change. It's... Sure, yeah, you have yeah. a keybind for your bench now. Easy. Now you yeah. So yeah. It's, it's so amazing. Your, your yes, roleplay potential to... is up, right, Nara? So you yeah. can roleplay really hard as use... Doom now. <laughs> I don't know what to put into my shared inventory slot now anymore. It's just... Oh. You slot now. Everyone's got a new slot. Gizmos. Yeah. I, I do like it, actually. I do like um, the, the fact that they've done it. Quality of life is always very good stuff. Uh, yeah. I mean, they are fun little what items, and it did get annoying when they like filled up your inventory. It... Mm. I mean, I, I never use those too much, but I have that issue when it comes to like, I don't know, a bunch of different like tonics and stuff. I have it mostly for tonics because I usually play every open world map once, and I get the tonics just to like have them. And although I don't really play with them much, but like something like that for tonics would be more useful in my opinion. But there was yeah. a it, it was like a major concern to me. Like I would never like get these novelties novelties because I thought they would just fill up my inventory and eventually they'd end up in my bank, filling up a bank slot that I'd later regret not using. So it's a fun little change. Yeah, it is a fun little change, and it's always good to have some uh, some convenience like that, right? Um, yeah. Uh, and yeah, as they were adding more and more of them, it kind of made sense that that, that would happen. And not being able and. to use them on all your characters all at once is really annoying anyway, so I don't know. And you can and. use them you can use them in raids now and stuff, which is kinda cool. And use them in World vs. World, which is Can you use oh, the throne in raids now? I yeah, you you can use cer certainly some of them work in, in raids, I think. Or, uh, uh, I I saw a bass guitar in raids. So that's and pretty, now it's pretty hype. You can you can laugh at all the silly people that spent thousands of gold on the Doom Throne because you only had yeah. to spend six hundred gems <laughs> on your dragon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can I laugh that. as I as I unpack as I unravel my en as enormous drone next to their tiny little uh, doom chest <laughs> that they bought. <laughs> doom is so doom is Perfect. doom is the last year, dude. Yeah, yeah. I, I especially I, I go to open world places now just to pack out the throne next to people on the chair, just to show dominance. Yeah. I do open world tours. I, I do yeah, I, I do like world bosses now for this reason. I gotta be honest, if you can use the throne in World vs. World, I'm buying it. And I'm just gonna I'm as after we kill people, I'm just gonna use it on them. I don't think you I don't think you can. God damn it, this novelty changes shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I, I wanna I wanna I wanna mention one thing that I wanna uh, give Arena Net credit for. I think uh, I've seen like um and that is PAX that's going on right now. Mm. And I've seen tweets about that, and I think that is probably the best thing I've seen them do, uh, marketing yeah. and convention wise ever oh, yeah? What's they've that? actually like uh had they actually have an area that has like computers rigged up and they have devs uh they have people who can come up there and on a fully equipped account play the deep stone fractal 
Um, and I think that's so good. And, and meanwhile, they're like devs going around showing them the fractal. And I think yeah. that is so amazing. That was always something that I've missed, uh, like a presence like this. Um, it would have been nice if they had, I don't I mean, maybe I missed it, but it would have been nice if they would sort of announced that they were going to, you know, have a big convention at PAX. I don't know. I don't think yeah. they did. It's classic, ain't it, right? Like you, they, they, they do this kind of cool event and they just don't tell anyone until it already happens, right? It, it's just... It's really, kind of weird. Really, it, it, I mean, weird. you're right. It's, it's, it's nice to see them doing something, but it's it's kind yeah. of weird that they didn't like tell people it, they were doing. It is it's very much. There was a huge right need to be. They've always they'd mm. always be at these conventions and only have like the Griffin rigged up and yeah. like yeah. Make no, oh yeah, it's great Griffin and that's everything. Yeah. And they actually like they're actually showing the game and actually yeah. showing the mm. features of the game, and I think that is so incredibly good. Yeah, not even I mentioning mean, the fractal leaderboard, which is there's very soon. Yeah, what do you guys think? Sorry, Wait, they're again? actually they're actually making a fractal leaderboard? No, no, it's it's. Oh, oh okay. I was, I was it's, gonna uh, say it's like a big paper play, <laughs> poster that they uh, write the the times on. Basically, uh, they have this okay, competition yeah, yeah. running that if you come as a team of five there, um, the fastest team to run uh, the deep zone fractal gets put up on there. Okay. It's just a Did flip they win shot. something. <laughs> mm. yeah. Well, what about what about uh, the challenge mode? Do they do they use the challenge mode for it? There's no CM in deep zone there. Yeah. There's no, no CM. Wow. Wow. Well, why would they make a fractal without a CM teapot? Because, well, not I. Th this is an interesting argument, but real, not every fractal has to be a CM. I mean, look, the, all, no, some, of, some, some of the fractals are just meant to be easy. And look, look at the ones that exist, right? Stuff like uh, like uncategorized is like a joke meme fractal, right? Um, stuff like I don't know, like chaos is really easy. Like, there's plenty of really easy fractals. Like, and the thing is, they there wanted, are easy fractals. Yeah, they they wanted to. Yeah, deep, the thing is, the reason why people there's are upset about PvE Deepstone, content in this game. Yeah, there is indeed. Like, Deepstone <laughs> Deepstone should have been a CM because the theme would have been really appropriate and it would have been really good to have it as a challenge mode. But I, I, it's 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 whatever, right? Yeah, especially um, that last boss. Like, there's a lot of things you could CM yeah, with, with that last exactly. Boss, you know? Yeah, precisely. Like, there's there's a lot they could have done there, but. Unfortunately, it, it didn't really happen. Um, and, and, like, if you let a thing fall, it never comes back. You know, you have your special action key. If yeah. if you fuck up and it actually goes away, it never comes back. That would be pretty good. Current so. Ooh, fastest CM run right there. Easy. On, on Deep Stone at PAX 20 minutes. Minute. Wow, 20, Wait, that's what, fast as fuck, dude. Yeah. Holy shit. Well, so those must run. be some speedrunners. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. SC. SC and Frosty. Yeah, I, the, no, the, twenty minutes is a little fast for SC, dude. I, I don't know. After watching, their after watching their performance at the Herb tournament, I, yeah, <laughs> the Herb tournament, the, the, the Herb. <laughs> they it? probably exploited. Yeah, so they probably probably did. That was a They were probably player. using Ritz too and stuff, so it's not really fair to compare. <clears throat> oh, that's true. Uh, on on the general note, in terms of the marketing, I've actually seen some really good things from arena Net. i can't believe i'm actually saying good marketing and arena Net in the same sentence uh if you look at the interview the video that they did for the anniversary i think was um, was really awesome and then there were there were a few um kind of interview videos with mike z uh, he's he's I think he's game director actually like someone tell yeah. me if i'm wrong there um mike but, a good guy yeah but i was really impressed by what he was saying in these interviews okay and people are going to accuse me of being an arena Net shill okay i know i know you are. Yeah, I'm an arena net shill, guys. Okay. You dirty arena. They pay they, you for tea time. They they pay me for tea time. Yeah, they they do indeed. Uh, but he said some things in relation to the player base and um how, that made me really think he he understood what what's going on a lot. Um, he he was talking about how uh people kind of like find challenges in the game and they want to adjust to those challenges. That kind of suggests that he he's aware of like the the issues around raid difficulty and how they might want to look into that um and he, again he he really looked like he understood the narrative as well he was talking about how they rotate characters in and out and how like some of the execution was kind of bad in the past so they, like for example with scarlet and then they they kind of fleshed her out later on because they realized they meet they kind of screwed up and and did that so that that's what i think is a really interesting insight into the the developer i was very impressed by his his game knowledge he seemed to know everything about the game which is really really impressive uh, and he gave a very good interview i think and it made me very very hopeful actually very excited about the for the for the future of the game um yeah. uh, with the, what, he, what he was saying with regards to um content release and how they're going to smoothly transition between living world seasons and actually they've got structures in place to get content pacing out um with regards and to they're working and on the sixth red wing they've yeah, started working on it was I'm, I'm really kind of, impressive actually Mike, he's the kind of guy he, he really listens to all the feedback he mm. takes every feedback seriously he's like you'd probably you'd see him on an a standing in, in lion's arch actually talking in map chat and uh like 
I mean, I, I got to meet him at Gamescom last year and it was it was great, right? I mean, yeah. you did too as well. And like, he really like listened and he like talked about everything that you'd bring up. But at the same time, as I had the exact same feeling you have right now that you just described the feeling that things are going upwards. Like he, he knows the issues, he knows what's going on. Mm. But I was disappointed last year because I was promised like a lot of uh, content releases I d and I don't, I don't see them. I don't yeah, see I gotta... them. I, 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 have be honest, I, I would say I'm actually disappointed. I do not share your enthusiasm, Teapot. No? I'm sorry. No. Uh, do, you, do you see it as almost like empty promises then, to a certain extent? Like you just, you... I mean, I don't know. I didn't watch the video. All right. And I do like Mike Z. I think he's a cool but I just, I'm not, I don't have a lot of faith at the moment. I don't think it's that bad. I, I, I feel like, I mean, I've seen you guys talk about like Wing right. 6, you know, taking too long, but I really don't think it's as like big of a deal. Because well, me as a casual, as a casual as a raider, PvP player. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm PVX too. I, I, I mean, do raids and stuff. No, as a casual imagine, player, imagine if are... you, imagine if you weren't able to PVP for the last ten months. No, but I what? But PVP has been worse than raids because PVP has had the same maps for over a year, for like. But a PVP really long time. And, and and PV are, are, are just generally different. PVP is not as dependent on content releases as PVE is. It's just like yeah, PVP is, yeah, yeah, is yeah, dependent agree, on agree. player population yeah. and stuff. It's not really jet. You don't need a new map to make PvP interesting. League of Legends is a competitive game, and it's had the same map striving for years now. Yeah, no, you're you're, like, you're right about that. Yeah, but I, I'm just saying it's not it, something that PvP needs. But PvE needs new content because old content is it, it, PvP. PvE is like a pair of shoes. You wear it for too long, and they just like they, they you know, they fall apart. you need new ones. They die, That's, and like, all they, your they, friends they, die they, too. They get holes. It's. Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know. You need you need new content in PVE to keep it interesting. You, well, yeah, I new content, content, but I mean more accessible, balance. more accessible content, which is why I think raid isn't their priority because the the average player yeah. still doesn't like clear like raids the way you guys might think they do. That's all I'm saying. You know, you know, he's right. I think it's yeah. I think it's wrong. Yeah, which is why I'm not saying it's as bad. Average player though, because I don't think. But there's some easy. There's some things that have been suggested to to address that. Like like easy modes. And yeah, this is like why um, I was really interested to see what Mike Z had to say about how how he how they kind of understand the struggles that the player base have with with some of the content, and it's it's kind of a bit of a barrier to people. Um, because if that's the case, if they make raids very accessible and very easy for everyone, um, then they'll get more developer time, right? And uh, that's kind of the same for World vs World. Like if 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 there was a way to make World vs World much more accessible to um, very very casual players, right? Then you'll see more developer time. Like if 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 you see that there's a demand for something, then you'll see it. Cause... I think they dropped the ball for Rovi World, honestly, because Rovi World was like it was the game mode. Like when the game yeah. started, Rovi World was what attracted everyone. I mean, me personally, like just the whole like open world, killing everyone, fighting with Zergs. You know that whole concept was cool, but then they just actually just shit the bed with like no changes at all. And then the map was t the new the Heart of Thorns map was kind of. I mean, no one liked it, and just like nothing changes, and even with the alliance thing, which is like people are excited about it, which they should be because Rovirol doesn't get much. But that's not even like content. That's just it's um, it's just it's gonna be fancy UI changes along with um, just uh, better. Like they're gonna make it where you, they're gonna kind of shrink the servers more, basically, kind of thing. It's yeah. not actually new content but that you're gonna be playing. I, I still think that just 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 having something fresh will help a lot though right i think what's key Especially... with with regards to any game mode if that's pv pvp or world versus what is that it feels fresh whether that's say a new map in uh, pvp or some new rewards in pvp or a new um a new tournament system in pvp or in world versus world where you have say a new map or honestly just just changing the balance like really kind of shaking the balance that would be really cool as well right um to, for these games like changing how it gets played be really yeah, cool, I mean, but... that's the one thing they used to do that they stopped doing. But then again, you can't really blame them for kind of shaking up the meta because back then when they used to do it, remember it was like your class would be good for three months and they would actually just kill it and then buff something else. Mm. And people hated well, that. that. So now yeah. they've been playing it safe. That's and... quite extreme, right? That, that would be... yeah, yeah, yeah. But now it's like too safe. Like classes mm, like yeah. Ranger and Ellie that have been bad since Path of Fire in PvP and World View World. Well, not Ellie, Staff Ellie, I guess, is good, but uh, Ranger has been bad since Path of Fire. And it's still bad. Like they don't, they're just not going ham and just giving it the changes that it needs to just be competitive. Or yeah, good. yeah. I mean, my my, my biggest sucks. issue right now is just the pace of everything. 
It's just very, very slow. Yeah, that's also Takes trash. A lot of time. I also think Swiss is like, I mean, Swiss is the same thing as like alliances, but then like, people are excited about it, but it's not really targeting the majority of PVPers because the ATs aren't like yeah, like uh, most, most PvPers, yeah. Like, so I feel like that might have been a mistake. Right. They they should have honestly yeah. like released. And you, like they should have just pushed out two v twos earlier. They should have released like a map or two earlier. Maybe fucked with Stronghold a little bit, and then gave them good rewards instead of spending about a year on Swiss, which is really still only targeted for like the people that do ATs, which is a very small minority of PVPers. So I, yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, that's that's very true, and I, 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 that kind of rework is again, it's not really going to. To really change but the thing is it with pvp like at least at like least that. with pvp you're getting 2v2s after swiss right you're yeah. getting content after but with world v world it's like you don't want people to get too excited about something because then like people will enjoy the whole alliance thing you know they get to pick who they play with but then they're gonna like it's gonna hit them like a couple months after it's like oh shit like it's the same maps the same content it's the same meta like nothing changed it's just the different ui once you get used to that mm. so they have to like they have to like be prepared to release new content after like the whole alliance system, which, which I mean they do they did need to release the alliance system because it's kind of like fundamental at this point for the world, but yeah. they need content right after. That that is true, I think, but I, I would say that's maybe slightly too cynical. Um, with alliances, I think it has a big potential to turn into a lot of self-generating content with the interactions between guilds, right? With guilds. If, if you give World vs. World a more clear-cut objective and a more reason to be good and reason to win, I think it almost works out on its own. Um, if people have a reason to beat each other, then the game can kind of run itself and make its own content, you know? Well, yeah, but that, that that's what I'm saying, though. It's going to be cool for a bit, but it is going to die down. And World World has been seeing a decline just because of the lack of content. Like, there should be something, like... And, I, I mean, it's actually reached the point where most World of Worlders think that something is better than nothing. Like, like if they release a new map now, even if it's, like, terrible, there would probably be hype about it, you know, kind of thing. Ooh, well, it depends. I mean, not, like, if it's not as bad as the, the Desert World. As long as it's... Yeah, if it's not as bad as the, the HUT release, but... Although, to be fair, there are a lot of different other... I just mean, what I'm trying to say is Swiss and the Alliance system, they're just, like, they're kind of like a foundation. They're not content. Like, it's just, mm -hmm. it's going to make the game mode Especially better, when it takes this long. But you need, you need new content right after it. Like, you shouldn't wait another year for there to be content right after you've kind of fixed mm -hmm. the game mode. Or it's made it's it a real better. shame that it takes this long to implement them in the first place as well. Yeah, I don't yeah. think anyone thought it would be, like, a year plus. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought Alliances... Like, I when Alliances got announced, okay, maybe... Oh. Maybe May the soonest, but you know, or June, but probably by August or September. But we haven't. I don't think they're anywhere near being done. Like, it's you know, I guess it's just it's a real shame. I mean, and again, the, there's been since POF n one raid wing and what two fractals, I think. Uh, there's been yep. like two living story chapters, one of which was delayed a month, and again, that's not really content because you play it for like an hour it's, and that's it. It's it they just put way too much effort into into living world releases, in my opinion. Like the um, the amount of effort that they put they, into though? new maps and to uh, con contrasting the fact that most of these maps have absolutely no replayability or no reason to go on them after your initial exploration or something. There there was like one map that had it has replayability and that's Istan because of Palavadan farm and stuff. But other than that, these are just like maps that you go into once to play your story. Uh, kind of explore on the way you kind of think ah oh, that's a nice little thing but like they they cost so much developer time right like they're such they're like the main focus yeah i agree maybe have like two living stories in the same map like i don't think people are going to be mad if there isn't a new map honestly i think it would be too. it would be the way to revive old maps that have no content pof came out with five maps that basically have no real replayability and it would be so i think it would be so good and they're to really cool maps too Mm. Yeah, I agree. Why don't they do the Heart of Thorn thing with it? Like, give them like, there's a lot of people tie in, like new them. legendaries with them or something. But then that would also take a while. But give them a meta that, or give each of the Path of Fire maps a new aura. Boom! Not a ridiculous drop rate. Um, and yeah, there you go. Easy I think ones. what they could do is they they could introduce two maps that don't have this. Um, like onto certain areas of maps, they could introduce meta events. Like now to make the world like kind of it would kind of like be like a permanent living world thing. Like they would add a meta event. Mm. Um, I don't know. Like pr the example I always use for this would be like let's say Krakatoric attacks 
Crystal Oasis or Amnoon. Uh, and basically, you'd add a meta event where every two hours for 20 minutes, you have Amnoon under siege by Krakatoric things. Under siege. Yeah. And like, and your mission would be to defend it. And if you like... Nah, let him die. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> or you could do that. Yeah. You know, something like this. And it would... Um, I think actually it, it's getting to the point where we have inflated maps where you actually can't even bring out new maps that have replayable content because there's too many of them. Like, you can't make every map replayable because otherwise you just end up with 15 maps that, like... And it would always boil down to the one that is slightly the most... Um, that is, like, the slightly most profitable. Um, so, yeah, yeah I, I think at this point... Like, it would have to be, like, a unique thing that the maps give. At least yeah. with the expansion maps. I thought this was, like, a huge given away opportunity on Sandswept Isles, which had back slots, which ultimately weren't profitable to farm that way. But that sounded like a really good reward for farming a certain map. But, What's but I mean, the core, the core thing of what I'm trying to say is like there's way too much effort being wasted on huge maps that have that that you never go back to. That are, it's it's just a wasted effort to me. Yeah, they don't get and a lot so of value actually, out of the new maps, especially. And like, I mean, how many devs are working on those while while ten devs are working on Fractal's end rates? Yeah, and then uh, well, what like I want to know is three uh, guys on how many devs are working on mount skins, dude. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, believe me. I mean, I, I would assume 90% of the company at this point. <laughs> that's, that's probably... Why not that's just have Living Stories send you to, like, already existing maps that people don't really go to? I mean, that would be... Like, yeah. just add a couple of events there. So now you, you save up a lot of time because you don't have to fucking recreate maps that people only go to once because there's reward tracks, right? Like, you finish the story, and if you want that currency, it is actually, like, more efficient to just farm the reward track so you don't want to go back to the map, um, except for, like, I guess, Bitter Frost. <laughs> but then, yeah, you save up a lot of time because um, no map creation, and then you can put that somewhere else. I feel like that would be yeah, way better I mean, than actually creating a map every three months. Exactly. For content. Yeah, they could. I mean, they could still every now and then put out a map. I think they're kind of too too much clinging to this principle of every living world update has to have a map. Um, yeah, that's terrible. I don't like that. It, it's like it's forcing them into this terrible, stressful release cycle that like makes them forget about, like makes them not focus on other content because they're like setting this bar for themselves. Oh. And it's, <laughs> But I think we, we do look at this from our own perspective, right? Like, mo the, the majority of the player base um, plays casual open-world content, right? So but do they play these maps that don't have replayability, or do they no, just they, go to a stand? No, okay, here's something, in, here, here's something that might concern you a bit. Um, the way Mike Z described the game was almost like a TV show that you participate in, right? And that's actually how a lot of people play the game. I think. I think you actually, they actually do play the game as a TV show that you can participate in. So I want to change the channel. What? So I went, that that that's what I mean. That's why it's almost like a single player game. It's it's like a single player game plus to a lot of people. I think there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but well, I think we do have shit. to we do have to consider that. I think a lot of people do just want to play through the story once, and then then you have the added bonus of being able to go around and, and farm some loot and. Look, look all pretty and ride around on a beetle. So no, I, I also, I also very much enjoy looking all pretty in game and stuff, right? I, I, Rocket, I do enjoy a lot pretty. of casual stuff that people don't think I have fun with, right? But um, at the same time, that's you lose, you lose all the. So players basically, Rocky, you just admitted you hate raiding. All right, and, great. And Rocket's <laughs> gonna do that in real life soon, guys. Get ready, he's gonna dress up in real life soon. Just had to bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> was it the uh, the slutty samurai costume? It's nearly here, right, Rocker? It's very close. It's very Rocko, close. Rocko, what did you I'm, do? I'm scared at this point to say fixed dates, but it's what did you do, Rocker? Things just keep happening, but yeah, it's next weekend at the latest. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So are we are we done talking about the patch? By the way, I guess we, well, have we moved on. With with, with there's nothing really else to talk about. Yeah, well, with regards well, to the patch, we've gone through all of it. We're just kind of now we're just flaming the game, uh, which is it's just what, flaming the game. Which yeah. is my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> That's what, what about the best about thing? <laughs> what about the what? best content they've added in a long time? Which is sorry. What about what the best thing they've added in in ever? Okay. Which is the new armor set of skins that you get for your sixth birthday present. What? Are you serious? or Are you kidding? I like it. I like it a lot. It's not. I, I was maybe exaggerating a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> okay. I like uh, the uh, released uh, armor that's not an outfit, so I'm but, always for see, that. But what is what is that moth's name, dude? God. 
Oh. <laughs> is that your is that your friend? Yeah, yeah. It is now the the moth has dominion over me, guys. Okay. Uh Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what God looks like then, I guess. Right. It's Arophia. Okay, Arophia claims oh. the moth is her. It's Nemesis. Mm. Nemesis. It's Nemesis, Nemesis back from the grave, dude. Moth, bro, oh boy. Oro, are you okay? No. I mean, the, 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 <laughs> it's, it's. I'm impressed that they managed to do an armor skin. Seeing as it, wait, okay, how long did it? Okay, wait. Let, let's let's do a bit of an let's let's meme arena a little bit. So they claim it takes them about six months to do an armor set, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's. I think that's probably if they're working at breakneck pace, but. So the, is that good? Like that's that's terrible. No. Right? Uh, yes. <laughs> so what? Like, how fast does WoW release armor? Sets? I was kidding. If that's true, though, right? Then surely they were working on the sixth birthday present for six months prior to its release. Well, Isn't I'm that... glad that they released that content instead of a raid wing or an update for World versus World. Yeah. I, I, I mean, mean, why did they do I mean, that? I mean, he will occur. Oh, God. If, if, <laughs> if I didn't have my armor skin for my sixth birthday gift, I'd be real disappointed. Well, that's what I mean, right? I, it, isn't it a bit like why would they do that if they're already so pushed for time? You know, I mean, I just—it's a bit weird. Well, you, you know what, Teapot? It's—I would rather wait five years and have a oh. real nice raid wing that yeah. that takes me a day to complete yeah. than have a rushed raid raid wing that is not enjoyable. Okay. A day All right, Teapot. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. A whole right. day. A whole day. Sports. Raid. Production. It took me a year to get Doom CM, and I had to get carried by Teapot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but Teapot finished it in a day, so. Oh, dude, no, do, like Doom CM. No, Doom CM took a week. Not, not CM. CM. No, no, I'm not talking about yeah. CM. I'm not talking about CM. Yeah. But I will say that Doom is good because it was probably the most challenging thing to date. Mm. But again, it's just like. Yeah. Where's the next well, the, 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 key, the key in all of this, right? Like, this one, this kind of argument or discussion, whatever, has been said a thousand times. It all comes down to content pacing, right? I, yeah. this, you wouldn't notice this if it was, say, a raid wing. Honestly, even a raid wing every. Like, like five months, four to five months, or like six, even six months wouldn't feel that bad. But the fact that it's going to end up as ten months, and again, we don't know. Again, it's wow. it's a yeah, lack. Yeah, you're, you're saying ten months as if it's coming out tomorrow. It, it's a lack of knowing as well. <laughs> I, I I said that I, I feel like this is a little lost on on people when I said this last time. But it's a lack of knowledge of what's actually going to happen. Like, if you know, if you know, if we knew for sure that the raid wing was going to come out every six months, and I don't think anyone would mind. Like, honestly, yeah, even, even if it was a slower schedule, if it was, like, eight months, if there's a raid wing every eight months, right? Like, even that, people wouldn't be as dissatisfied with the game because they would know it's going to happen. If we knew, if, if say, in World of Us World, we knew that alliances were going to be out, like, next February or something, just, like, a, as a random meme, right? Then I don't think people will be as dissatisfied. If we knew when Swiss was coming or we knew when two v the 2v2 thingy was coming instead of just data mining... It will be better. Wait, and again, like, do you know when we're going to get the raid wing announced, by the way? It's going to be like the week before, okay? Which, which uh, I don't know. I, I realize this is such a minor thing and not relevant in a reading that's business model whatsoever. But it's very annoying when you have to like, you, if you want to do like a 20, go, go all night and like try and clear it in one day. It's like, it, it's honestly like announcing it a week in advance is like a massive fuck you to all the players who want to do that. You know, it, it, it's almost like they don't want you to. I, I honestly suspect did they say that, they... that they're going to announce it a week before. Was... No, but they did last time with Hall of Chains, oh, okay. more or less. Like they, they announced it was either one week or two weeks, which is still cutting yeah. it pretty. Well, cool. Last time we just got that one tweet. Yeah. As an announcement, right? right. Did we just get that one tweet of like a raid portal and. But in the underworld, I I feel like it, it's so silly though. I, this, this is why I don't like this practice from Arena. Net. I, I feel like it's bad for the player and it's bad for Arena. Net. Like, why give yourself one week to hype up a, a release? Yeah, right. Like, exactly. Why would you do that? I don't. I, I don't understand. It's just like it, it's insane. It, actual insanity doing that to me. And but the thing is, it's also horrible for the player as well because you can't plan for it. It, it just, I, it's, it's like they, they just want to spite the players who want to go like mega try hard and go for worlds first and stuff. Like by making well, because those players just don't exist, Teapot. And, okay, you're kidding yourself. If and you, and if to be do. fair, that isn't true, guys. Like just, just so everyone knows, that's not what they're doing. They're just, uh, it's just arena <laughs> net, right? I, well, I, you don't it's know not, that. No, it's Maybe not. Is, I, I honestly don't believe arena net is malicious in any way. Seriously, like, that's just not. It's just not. It's just I don't not know, the case. Dude. I've, no, I've, I've asked myself multiple times that this game is just a social experiment. Uh, yeah, so provide polite constructive uh, criticism and feedback. So many of my ideas, uh, many of such ideas being implemented in episode three, so we can go from there. Smiley face. I don't know. It, it's just, 
I just wish they'd shill their game really hard, honestly. Um, I, especially for a raid wing as well. Like a raid wing is going to create a lot of hype around the game, even if you don't play it. Okay, even if you don't play it, because uh, I, I, you can see this in the Nobody's Twitch. Nobody raids. You, you you can see um, it in the Twitch viewership, right? Like when there was a raid wing, like for example, for wing when wing five came out, right? This was a while ago. It was in um it was in November, right? I had nearly like 2,000 viewers. viewers. Like yeah. 2,000 yeah. viewers. Like it was like 1.8k peak or something like that, right? It's pretty good. Um, and and uh, what, what was what was that tournament that <laughs> ran? I mean, it was, it was like a couple months ago, I think. And I think it was, I think it was a community-run tournament. I yeah. could be wrong. Maybe arena. Net, it was an arena that run tournament. I don't know, but it, I think it was a community-run tournament. And I could be wrong here, but I believe it had the most viewers on Twitch of any tournament uh, that was community-run uh, in this game. Uh, uh, do you know what you know what tournament I, that was? I, I think I might know. It was the the elitist yeah. raiding party? I had five k. Oh, years. and was I, that with raids? It was with raids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, the okay. So I guess there are people interested in raids. Yeah. I think that, but there are, there are, it, it just shows that there are people who are interested in raids and PP. Look at the Yugo, right? It was like two and a half k viewers, right? Like, look, uh, that, that, that was the just the Renner. Oh, sorry, the Miss Challenger. No, oh god, no, no, oh, shit! I just completely yeah. The Miss Challenger, Roy's boys, wooden potato. What, what tour, was that tournament? I don't know what you're talking about. Fuck. Yeah. Oops. Sorry about that. Yeah. That again. But again. Again, uh, yeah, yeah, Hugo. Again, very strong. Uh, uh, the thing that um, uh, Cinder and Helseth ran as well, just before like, he bugged uh, off. I was like two kids. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. There are people interested in these gamers, but I just feel like the, it could really do with some hype, right? Like, why not just hype up the two v two, right? Like, do a dank cinematic, like showing the the cool cup you get for winning or whatever, like whatever you know, like the funny hat you get, because you'll probably get some kind of funny hat uh, for winning it. Funny hat. Know. Yeah, like alliances, dude. You know what is hype, okay? And I, I'm very cynical about world versus world saying. montage. Montages, I okay, because I look at roaming montages and dude, that's fucking hype. Even though it's good players bullying idiots, okay, it's still fucking hype, right? <laughs> dude, okay, fans jump right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why not have a dank world versus world montage to hype up alliances? Because Guild Wars Two could sell itself so well on the world dude, versus the, world. The, on, this like, is the, Eve trailer is the coolest yeah. thing ever. Yeah, you make something like that for, and there are countless world versus world players who would readily yeah. submit stuff for, for yeah I, there, you, what, you would, have, are so cool. would have to do nothing except say send us a video and we'll put it together and make a montage yeah. that's all they'd have to do and i imagine they'd want to dress it up a bit do some cool editing oh, well, yeah, on sure, that sure, right sure. Edit, but i don't know i i think that guild wars 2 could do so well off world versus what if they just hyped up like alliances are i see alliances as this golden golden opportunity for arena to kind of kick start the game mode again almost like reset it and say right okay world versus world we memed it into especially, a corner for a little bit, but now release, we're bringing it back. Especially if they release it before CU, because like, there are still so many people waiting for the next RVR thing, mm. and a lot of people are like, oh, I'm yeah. just going to wait for CU because Guild yeah. Wars 2, World Wars World failed me. If they exactly. if they say, oh, we're rehashing World Wars World, we're making it, yeah. and again, obviously, like Nara mentioned, you need you need real content after alliances, but if they say, we're changing things up, we're, we're shaking it up, we're doing this huge overhaul, and you really advertise it, then yeah, I think you'd get a large population back. I think you'd see a lot of players that played this game at release that would come back for it. I really yeah, do. I agree. A absolutely. A lot of people already are. A lot of old guilds have been coming back. Well, a lot of a lot of people did, and then it was, <laughs> and nothing happened for six months, and they left. Yeah, like, they came a bit too early. I <laughs> I was so excited. Later. I remember it was on. It was you, you were streaming Teapot when they announced alliances. I came in. I was so excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's like when nothing's happened. It's, it's, you know, I just and that's my it, problem. It, There's just it takes way too long for things to happen. Mm. We haven't had a raid wing. Oh. I, yeah, you know, and just, when it I happens, I think just well I, I, again, like this is this has been said a lot, right? But like, when something happens, they just don't capitalize on it, right? They release Wing Five, which it, which even on its own is a very hype raid wing, right? Because not only is it a raid wing, it's also Doom from Guild Wars yeah. One, right? Who was already a very hype character. Uh, we're going back to yeah, the underworld. Shit. This sort of I thing, am Doom. right? Yeah, yeah Naru, he loves it Doom so is, much. Is he, he now role plays as Doom the entire time, right? Uh, what, but they didn't hype it at all. It was like a crappy screenshot and like some vague, like, oh yeah, go to the underworld and defeat Doom. Ooh, the voice in the void. Ooh, yeah. It's like, oh wow, that's uh, really. Uh, are you are you the guy that does the trailers for them? Exactly. Yeah, I think I am, right? <laughs> um, again, when when alliances come around, I'm just terrified that it's just going to be like. Okay, we put alliances in the game. Here are the patch notes. It's like, I'm going to wake up one day and alliances are going to be in the game. Yeah, like, oh, oh. This is going to be like one no, random I, Tuesday I, and there's going to be alliances. Much, as right. much as I say I don't have faith in real, I, I sincerely believe that they are going to announce alliances well before it comes out and give people a chance to if you know get organized because I think they recognize it. I mean, the fact that they're making alliances, I think they recognize that players organize themselves in this game. 
you know, I, I'm very, I'm very sure they're going to an S. And also because of the fact that they're going to give you titles based on the server you're on, and I'm pretty mm. sure it'll be whatever server you're on when alliances come out. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, so I think they want people to be able to go to that server. So I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's not going to happen. Uh, but you're right. That is, that is a fear for sure. I mean, if that happened, that would be awful. <laughs> Wake up one day and alliances are here. Hey. Yeah, there we go. I just did. I, I mean, hey, maybe maybe Wing Six is already in the game, but we don't even know. Wait, it. It's just hidden somewhere. <laughs> no one's found it. Yeah, you have to do like an achievement quest, like in WoW, and just no yeah. one's no one's. One day, it someone's out just yet. gonna be walking around in the jungle and yeah. accidentally enter Wing Six. And like, like, what? What's this? Wait, what? <laughs> what's what's going? On? What is what is this? Like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that would be pretty yeah. sad, actually. I have to yeah. say, uh, but I don't know. I, it's it is a concern that I have, and it, I really want ArenaNet to capitalize on what they do well, and it, it's the combat system, right? And and I think realm versus realm combat, and yeah, there are a few issues with with world versus world, right? Like there, the, a few. Yeah, I mean there are a few issues, but like honestly, like in terms of how the game runs, like people always complain <laughs> about the performance, but it actually works pretty well in world versus world, honestly. Um, and I don't know, it's, the combat it's, system it's, lends it's, itself very well to it. Oh well, yeah, obviously the combat's the best part. Uh, it, it just feels like get, no other game has really been able to nail it down um, no. as well as Guild Wars there, Two. You know? There, that's the most amazing thing. There, this game has been out for six years, mm. and it has steadily decreased in population. And every time a game comes out, everyone's like, well, World Guild Wars 2 is dead. And they go to this game, but they always come back. They always come back. Guild, but, Guild Wars 2 could have done literally nothing except release the game. And then just Anet could be like, all right, we're going to go do something else. And yeah. it would still be the same. Like, it would still yeah. just sustain itself with a steady decrease in population. But, like, it's just, you know, and let's talk it's about Prime example, Bic, okay? Some of his viewers don't even know what the word I, well, quit means anymore because of how many times he's come back to the game. And you know what? He'll be back too, okay? Yeah. Bic, the snake, has quit Guild Wars 2 so many hey, times. Hey, Sin, Sin quit but, too, dude. Yeah, well, but he's gonna, he'll, he'll, he'll probably come back. Come on, he can't resist. Dude, shout out to Bic. That's my homie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bic and Nar are best buds, dude. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was that drama? Did I miss something? No. No. Uh, no, no. no. no Big okay. just does. Not, Big just doesn't like all. um the team I'm USA PMA. guys. Big just doesn't like. Big just doesn't like anyone. Honestly, feels hmm. bad. <laughs> Whoa, I don't know. <laughs> he likes Valen. He likes Valen, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, he is the only person ever to beat Valen in debate, actually. So and there you go. He, oh, yeah. he, Valen was um. Valen called him a goat. That was a yikers right there. <laughs> Valen just Bic has is a, the real yeah. debate god. He, he is the debate. Oh, Big likes Brazil. That's right. Big in Brazil. Oh I yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I, I do, I, I do like Big. I, I wait for him to return. Okay, I'm excited for his return. It'll be really. No, I don't, I don't think like, I think a game like it was to you have occasionally take a break. That's. I think if you if you exclusively play one game mode, um, then yeah, you want to yeah, go for a break. Yeah. You want to, but if, I mean, I, even like even three, when I get bored of okay. TV, I try the other game. Oh. I play them for a while, and I still. I like, mean, there was a really long period of time where I did literally nothing but GB versus World, and I was happy. I de I because, definitely think because the, the world, scene was good. If there's any game mode you could play um forever, right? Just constantly, it would be World versus World. Yeah, uh, and that's why that's yeah. why the lack of yeah. actual updates and content hasn't killed the game mode. It's yeah, hurt it, exactly, but it hasn't killed yeah. it. Uh, because to a certain extent, even though it's not it's not crazy sandboxy, honestly, uh, th this might be controversial. I'd like to make it more sandbox. I think I think World versus World should be like even almost like play on random maps, right? So like the game just changes itself arbitrarily all the time. I don't know, that would be kind of cool. Um, stuff like that, but it, it already kind of creates its own content because you can come up with new strategies. You can well just play with different people. Like the social element is really strong in World versus World as well. Um, so. It already does sustain itself. It kind of like PvP does, but because World vs. World is a bit more sandboxy, um, World vs. World sustains itself a bit better. I want to say actually, like without without updates. Um, so the, there is that. But yeah, like, if there's any game where you could play only, it would be World vs. World. I would probably say like if you try and play only PvE, like you might have a pretty bad time because you might be waiting for. I'll, yeah, you might. Yeah, I mean, it's, really if you well. picked up this, if you picked up this game today, you could play only PvP. Oh yeah, oh yeah, but definitely. Yeah, oh yeah, oh for, hell yeah, for but... for a couple weeks. <laughs> no, no, for way longer than that, dude. Yeah. No. There's a lot. No, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I, I know, I know. You, yeah. you would have a lot of content, but yeah, for yeah. someone who's been playing the game even for a couple of years, PvE, you can't just play PvE. I mean, I don't know how you do it, Tifa. Yeah. You're insane. You're yeah, mad. I'm I'm set artificial goals, pretty much. Buy more, buy more accounts, basically. Yeah. It, that that's kind of how Guild Wars is, though. Like, Guild Wars is almost designed that you have to um set, you have to you have to decide what you want to do, right? 
if you want to go for if you want to go for a, a goal you've got to make it up yourself almost um and that's, it's double-edged right like sometimes it can feel like a bit of a chore to do that but other times it can be really rewarding and even on itself like to go for like low mans or records and stuff like that in in pv like the, there are these things where you can just try and oh yeah, know, yeah. just do memes a lot of fun it's a lot of fun to do that yeah. stuff honestly yeah. right um yeah. at, at some point it just like it all has like a limit it all has a limit of mm. how long you can motivate yourself without anything mm. yeah exactly uh, and of course you can just you know eventually things will be added to the game and it will be fresh again feels good man feels good man well i think that about covers it doesn't it guys not about you I think we mentioned everything. Uh, have we, did we not mention anything? Let's just have a let's have a brief think. Let's do a big think here. Think. Stronghold. No, I'm kidding. Strong. Oh, stronghold. Yeah. Uh, you know, in turn, you know, stronghold. If they really rework stronghold massively, okay. Or yeah, what give if it the Skyhammer tree? What if it? they just kind of? What if they made a new world versus world map, okay? But it's basically stronghold. And then it's so... way. It's they make stronghold really fucking big. Okay, really big, really big. Like, and so what? You have fifty v fifty on stronghold map. And fifty v fifty, and you have to kill what? the enemy guild lord. Oh, thank how cool that would be, man. I'll be sick. I'll be so good. I know it will be. It will be a bit weird. That actually might not be bad, honestly. It yeah. depends on the map, but it actually could be interesting yeah. because, like, essentially that's what a keep fight is. Yeah, yeah. It would be like At a, least it a, essentially, a very, essentially what a keep fight is. A very long actually, keep fight. Yeah. If there's no siege and the map is like good, I actually think that no, would be no. I, I was just about to say keep fights are probably the best open field yeah. things in the game. I was just about to say no siege, right? Because I think arrow carts would just ruin that. Or, or and well, then you don't have to get yeah. through. I mean, the yeah. gate. Well, yeah. Because you, 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 cool. you have that gates. You have gates because you have the little rats, right? You, you still have your little rats. The doorbreakers, yeah. yeah. The thing is, I think it'd be very difficult for them to do that because they've already. I think they've said that um, increasing the map cap for like the current PvP maps is already is really difficult. Um, based mm. on like the coding, I, I heard that somewhere. But um, could they? Could they? How? But the question is, how hard would it would it be for them to create auto siege in World versus World, right? Because that already kind of exists. If you're on a very outnumbered map, um, Siege Crusher will spawn, for example, right? Right. Yeah. And he kind of does that, right? What do you mean? The the the, the NPC that spawns will throw siege yeah. for you and stuff, won't he? Right. Yeah. So yeah. Surely, that's still a thing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, no it's, 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 still it's still a thing. You don't see it very often, but yeah, it's yeah. still a thing. So, uh, would it be hard for them to implement some kind of AI that would lay see that would you know you summon you summon these scripts right, and they just go and attack a gate because that all they have to do is do a damage a specific damage type right, like siege damage. This exists in the game, right? Siege damage right. is a thing. So they could just so make like door breakers. Yeah, basically. just just basically put door breakers in world versus world. Like, I wonder if that would be difficult to implement. It probably wouldn't be hard, but I don't know if that would really do anything. I feel like they'd get killed very easily. I mean, they'd get killed. Yeah, obviously, you you really have to change the balance here on how this would work, but it would still be doable. Also, what would be the point? What would be the point? Because I don't know. It would just be. It would just go around endlessly. Like you would just the, the map would just reset. It, or it would be like Edge of the Mist almost. Like it, 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 as soon as one team wins, it just resets. I mean, I'm. Oh, oh, you're talking about this. Whole, you're still talking about the stronghold type thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. No, I'm. Yeah. I, don't know, I think yeah. that would be kind of cool. It, it would almost be a way to implement GVG, right? Because. One of the things that, you know, G, oh, GVG boys, you know, like, people like it uh, from, if it was in Guild Wars 1, that was the objective, right? It, and Stronghold was almost supposed to be a bit like that, but not really. Mm -hmm. uh, it, just to have that Lord as the main objective, like, when you, you, you kill it, you win. So yeah, that would be a way to bring that back, then people could stop complaining. Ooh. Uh, Am I, I think the GVGs only need one? much. I would say that you just need to give them, like, rewards and a proper, like, scoring system, leaderboard, something so like that. Someone asking, someone asking in Twitch, am I the only one that wishes First World had smaller skirmish slash tactical gameplay? Well, now here's here, interesting, friend. Are you you're saying you want fights with smaller scale numbers? Because I believe something like that exists, and it's called GVG. Well, well, here this is this is my opinion on this. Um, wouldn't it actually be optimal? Suppose you wanted to really try hard and win World versus what? If you wanted to go fucking crazy and always win your matchup. Wouldn't it always be the most efficient way to do that anyway? I feel like zerging is not the best way to, in terms of no, actual no, no, efficiency. No. Hey, so you the thing is, the that, yeah, you have to split up no. into yeah. So what? what yes. This is why um, even though it's not the even though it doesn't happen as much, right? Like typically everyone's in like a mega blob. 
it's not actually the most efficient way to play the game. It's just like the easiest. And, and people don't give a shit about winning, so people won't do any alternatives. Well, um, some servers still do. Yeah, so, but... Some servers do, right? But not not a lot of servers. So it's kind of... or it, It's already oh. like that. But, but again, it, it's up to the players. I, I feel like um, ArenaNet almost puts too much... No, I'm sorry. The players put too much on ArenaNet. Like, a lot of this stuff is solved by the players. Like, if you get off your lazy ass, right, like, you could do this. You, you could, if you wanted to, like, really outplay people tactically in World vs. World. You, you could, like, lure them to another map and then, like, attack two towers at once on the other map. Then you back off from one and steal the other. Like, a lot of things in the game do kind of counter this. For example, there's really dumb shit, like, invulnerable fortifications and emergency waypoints that kind of counter this. Like, if you try and multi-prong, you can kind of get screwed over just by turning everything in vulnerable. No, if but if you still. if you genuinely want to win at PPT, the two best ways to do it on EU at least, um, and I guess on an A bit are off uh, havocing like you say, yeah. so splitting up into smaller groups. Because if you have if you have one really big group on the map, they're generally fight anyways. Mm. Um, and if you have like small groups that can flit in between the maps and and the objectives and flip something quickly, then that's they're going to you know they're going to out PPT. And then the other part is off off prime time off peak uh, oh, yeah. PPTing. So like for EU night night crews, and that's why a lot of servers um, historically were always like at the top because they had the best night crew. Because there's no one playing, so if you have a commander and 20, 30, 40 people that will follow that commander, mm. karma train at night, night capping, you're gonna win. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you want to win the matchup, yeah, you can PPT and 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 blobbing is not the ideal way, but that's you know, not not really what everyone is interested in. Yeah. Well, there you go. Get, if you get that moth to land on your hand, I'll donate $100. <laughs> 100, 100, 100. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fucking moth is taking me out, dude. Just just yeah. make Alter Valley. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, Stronghold could be a bit like that, actually. Yeah? It could be a bit yeah. like it. So, huh? there you go. Hope that gameplay becomes more common. It's kind of on Yeah, the... gameplay is common on certain servers. If you go to mm. Pike and Square, for instance, they have guilds that are literally created to Havoc. Uh, French servers, mm. I believe, probably do that. Spanish servers, uh, some NA servers, mm. but again, that's just like personally, I don't enjoy that. Obviously, if you, again, if you want to win the matchup, that's what you want. I mean, you know, Pykin has been a, a casual PPT server for a very long time. Um, but if that's what you're interested in, yeah, there are there are places you can. It, find it's that. probably more fun if both servers are doing it. If that makes any sense. I, if, right, yeah, um, no, it's extremely frustrating when you're matched up against Pykin and they do nothing but run away and sit in towers, but... Well, uh, oh, man, well, the shots right now. They, they don't want to... I mean, I, surely they were... I mean, they're just not interested in fighting. If there were two servers that were actually engaging in skirmishing against each other, like doing some, like, lower fights, like 15v15, 20v20, like, on the, about on the map, that would be kind of good, don't you? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that would be cool. For sure. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I feel can... like fights in multiple places is kind of how the game mode was supposed to be, and it's just not, it's just not how it ended up. Yeah, I, I think that's probably true. It was not de designed for 70 v 70 v 70 in yeah. the exact same place. But that a lot of people found that that was the most uh, logical way to play. Um, yeah, this, because... it's the easiest way, easiest way to do it, isn't it? Right. Yeah, because I mean, again, you can out PPT people, but if you don't care about winning, you're never going to lose if you're just a huge blob and the other group doesn't have a huge blob. So, yeah, but yeah, yeah. You know. it... The, the one thing that we could talk about that we haven't talked about yet is that there has been some speculation that there are no more expansions in the game, or at, least not, or at least not for a while. Uh, and right. I, this is I... very dubious, very open to interpretation, I think, but... Uh, the... That sounds tragic as fuck. I don't think that's true, because yeah. I have to imagine that, I mean, kind of going back to what I said before, the fact that like there just hasn't really been much going on since POF released, I have to assume they're working on the next expansion. I mean, what else could they be putting their resources into? I think alliances in Swiss, probably. But if that's all that they're working on, that's insane. Because it's taken yeah. so long. If all if if a lot of their resources are going towards alliances in Swiss, and it's been six months, six plus months since they were announced, and they still haven't released them, that's pretty sad. If I, they I all, if, if a lot of their resources are not currently working on something else, then yeah. I don't yeah. know. It's a curious. It also one. just wouldn't make sense from a like. I mean, they they make their most money. Yeah, out they, of the expansions right? were great for this game. Yeah. Uh, well, great for the business. Yeah, that's that, when they that get is. their huge like income spikes. Basically, is when they like expansions are amazing for that, and they've done definitely done had value for. And honestly, I think POF was was the release oh. was good. 
Uh, you know, I don't think it was a bad release. I don't think their last expansion release was bad. So I, I don't know no, why they wouldn't. You know? Um, yeah. so yeah, yeah. I, I would be surprised if they didn't. I mean, sure, there's, I, you know, yeah. I understand why people might think that there isn't, but I would be pretty surprised because, like, lack of lack of announcing that. First of all, it hasn't even been a year since PO has been out. Okay, like expecting them to be like, oh, we're gonna, you know, the next expansion's coming out right around the corner. I mean, that would be silly. It's, it hasn't even been a year since PO was released, but them not announcing or, or telling us about working on you know the next expansion does not at all mean that they're not working on it because they usually don't tell us that stuff so i i would be i'd be surprised if there isn't going to be another expansion in a year and a half or something you know? um, i i certainly take it to mean that either either they're going to have a very smooth transition through the expansion and um, between the living stories and not have a bit of a gap or that they're just um there's, they're going to try and fit in another season before the next expansion. The, ex the next expansion is going to take a little while longer than this one. Because I think they probably... I, I almost felt that they want to refine the next expansion very a lot, right? Because I think Heart of Thorns had problems and Path of Fire had problems. So maybe they're trying to do the, the perfect Storm expansion, right? Like it's going to be like the ultimate Guild Wars 2 expansion. I, I would be very much surprised if they didn't release another one because they made a shit ton of cash off it. Um, especially if, they, if, they're, if they're able to monetize the mastery that they introduce, it worked out really well for them. Like gliders were okay, but mounts were fucking amazing for ArenaNet, right? Like they suddenly made crazy cash out of um, monetizing that expansion, right? Uh, so I, I I don't really agree with this. In terms, I think it's a very blinkered and cynical view of how it, it's it's not even cynical. It, it's just like it, it's really kind of twisting it and and really grasp almost like grasping at straws a little bit. So like where this jumping originated, from, it's it's certainly jumping to conclusions, right? Like where where this quote came from is that Mike Z in an interview, I believe, with like MMORPG dot com something. He he said that we're going to be going from season four Living Story straight into season five right and people took that to mean that they aren't doing an expansion in between and honestly that may be the case that may be the case um they there might be an expansion after season five and they want to get a bit more story in first but if you think about it it wouldn't it wouldn't delay it a, yeah a crazy it really amount, right? i think what people forget is that after heart of thorns there was like a year of no of no living world so naturally the yeah. the living world had less episodes because yeah. Um, there was just less of them and now they are doing the frequent content releases they started mm. right after the expansion so there's more episodes there's more time uh, so yeah. they could easily split those into two seasons and just say now one thing they did for example with the new living world episodes is they they're much more uh, regionalized they're all in the desert elonian area right from a narrative standpoint and in because in the past they've done them spread out and a lot of people uh, i believe took issue with that or i heard a lot of complaining about that um, th what I could imagine is that they're just going to say, well, all of this living world season is in the Alolian, Alolian area. And then at the end, there's just going to be some big story impact that's going to like spread it out a little bit more. And then afterwards, and that's like already like the big difference. There's like some kind of story stuff that's going to happen. That's going to make, uh, bring us to like a different region in the existing map or something like this. Um, and then the next, uh, expansion brings us to Kantha. It's easy. I mean, it all makes sense. Yeah, I, I think what's more likely is that the, the, developer Roka. the, the <laughs> next expansion is just going to take a bit longer, right? Um, for example, if we if we look at the release dates for Heart of Thorns, Heart of Thorns came out in October 2015, and Path of Fire came out about two years later, September 2017. Right, so if it's two, it, it, it's just going to be instead of two years between expansions, it's going to be like two and a half or two and three quarters, right? And I don't really think that's a bad thing. Like it, giving them more time to work on the expansion is probably fine. Um, as long as there's stuff in between but yeah, yeah right? they're, they're, but this this kind of claim that they're saying that they're going to keep moving with the living story kind of suggests that they will keep doing they keep they will keep releasing content uh in between i and, mean yeah but I, I i mean stuff other than just living story cause well yeah I've, i imagine there will be raids and hopefully balance and well some you, you'd content hope so wouldn't games. you yeah you would hope so i do as well um but i think that will end up like that right mm -hmm. uh and worst case scenario if they don't do an expansion that could it could actually go forwards into a really interesting way they could start releasing content right so suppose they aren't going to do any more expansions they pro do they want to release any more elite specs right uh and how would they do that they'd have to do it in some kind of like mega balance patch hey, think about it it's not it's don't. not like they have to wait for an expansion to release elite specializations they could do it they could even release them one at a time even potentially I'd i think it's just too big a selling point for expansions that's yeah. the big selling yeah point for expansions. yeah 
That's why you buy Heart of Thorns. I mean, they, they introduced Masters in the new Elite Specs with Heart mm. of Thorns, and they introduced Mounts in the new Elite Specs. It's a big selling point. I'd be pretty surprised. Yeah. If, I mean, that was like the majority of the content with the expansions, right? Like, the it's rest one of, of the main reasons a lot of story. players even buy some of the of the yeah. expansions. It's like, yeah. when if you go into a PvP stream and you ask, uh, should I buy a Heart of Thorns? The answer is most likely going to be, you, yeah, yes, you want if the you specs. want to play Rev, or, you, yeah. you know, whatever. Like, I, I, I have, the only account I would have bought the expansions for is probably my main account if I didn't need it for Elite Specs. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't buy it on my other, on my alt I mean, accounts. No. From a PvE site, you probably, you also get the rates with it, right? You also, you get yeah. some maps on it. If you play yeah. PvE, that's, but, but the specs are definitely a very, very, very big point. I wouldn't see why they would. It wouldn't make I, sense. I would, I mean, yeah, obviously it's a big selling point for them. So, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they released new ones, but I would prefer they didn't. I, I'd rather see them try and bring other older, like, core classes and stuff that aren't used at all, like, the yeah, Ranger and, and Ellie. Um, to be more prominent in other game modes and balance stuff out a bit more. Again, I, you know, balance isn't necessarily bad, but it's just like stuff that isn't ever used would be, mm. it'd be nice. To I, I don't think one elite spec for expansion is a joke. No, I think wrong with that. I think that's fine. That's, it's like yeah. adding a, it's adding a complete. Well, well, why do you, why do you want to have so much it's to a the lot balance of content? Yeah, yeah. Elite spec yeah. That's a crazy class. amount of content. Um, elite yeah. specs. Elite specs are a huge component. If, well, if they're of, all um, good, the content. If they're all good. Well, if they all do something. There's more fucking insects getting in my room now. What the? But f there's not that many that are shit. Christ. It's like it's not like every elite spec crap. It's like one or two yeah. that are like kind of breaking out of a pretty good system. I'd say. Like the least like system is strong. Pretty much. An open window or something, T bot. Yeah, I've got an open window. The insects are just coming in, dude. Jesus, they want, they're gonna they're kill me. I'm gonna be call dead. Call yeah, I need. I'm gonna call the benchmark police. Dude. These moths have high DPS. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but anyway, that's, they're eating. They're gnawing at those ritz. You know, they're yeah. they're attracted by the paper. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they just want to eat those ritz. Uh, yeah, at least specs are pretty good. Uh, mobile. Yeah, Joe was talking about mobile games. I mean, I. You know what? This is. Oh, how could we have forgotten this? Right? How could we have forgotten this? Uh, so I don't know. The, in terms of no expansion oh, yeah. speculation, it, I mean, I don't know. Like either, either it doesn't matter, or I don't know. I, I think it's not gonna. I think they will do another expansion. It might just be a bit slower. They might just wait a bit more and work on it a bit more instead of pushing out Path of Fire quicker. Um, but I don't know. That's just that's just how it seems. I think I think people are just do. Uh, I think the community in Guild Wars Two has a tendency to be a bit um, doomsayery. You know, like it's a bit. Uh, yeah, that everyone here is a harbinger of doom. It's so very, very scary, right? But I, I, don't, I think it's not really that bad at most of the time. But there is one more thing that we can talk about, boys. The home instance they're putting in the game, okay? They, well, the player housing, basically. I, I reckon, thinking... I think it's garrisons, dude. They're doing fucking gar. They're doing Farmville. They're bringing Farmville to Guild Wars Two, boys. Okay. Get ready. What? I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, did you not see this? In the, you, this is where you got to watch the the anniversary video. There's going to be um in the sun okay, well, there's, uh. there's a there's a sun refuge, right? And you it's player housing. You can go and unlock NPCs. It's customizable for your player, okay? And you'll be able to interact so, with various NPCs and and upgrade so this instance. Well, it, basically, it, it's um. I don't know if you're familiar, it but sounds I, like an RP thing or something. Yeah, it's kind of like RP, but I think it will have like some repeatable stuff to it. It's I think yeah. I suspect it will be like garrisons in World of Warcraft. If anyone's familiar with that, maybe. So, it's ba cool. Basically, you can send NPCs out to do missions, right? That will do things, and you can get rewards by like upgrading all this stuff. Like you have to like build houses and make structures and imp and, and like repair this Southern Spear Sanctuary, right? Um, and it's also a historical location. Like I don't know. I think it's something that's been requested a lot. I think people will really like it. Like unlock the collections, the NPCs. There'll be some skins, uh, all that stuff, right? I think it'll be very, very, very interesting to see what actually happens in it. Like maybe it'll be rubbish though. I, I don't know. It's not something I'm crazy about. I mean, but I don't know. Just being able to like passively farm rewards and get passive bonuses. That's what I'm about, it's, guys. You know, okay? it's some. It's potentially something that a large. Uh, percentage of the population can use as like an end game goal so like that yeah, I agree. like rewards yeah. to certain maps could tie into this well maybe you could have stuff. legendary houses you have to farm for dude holy shit legendary house oh you, dude you could put house skins in the gem store <laughs> me, ain't it? holy shit Here well i mean <laughs> they're, they're, they are gonna put furniture in the gem store definitely like things you can put in the home instance like the player instance definitely like, it's gonna happen i don't know like that's just gonna happen 100 percent but, like another thing I heard people say is like that it might become like a Hall of Monuments thing where you can like place the achievements of your account. All right, that would be cool. I'd be I I would like that. That would be pretty cool because Hall of Monuments was a real big 
thing yeah. in Guild Wars 1. Ah, that would be I, really nice. I, 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 that is something that when, if there is eventually a Guild Wars 3, I very much hope there is some kind of implementation like that that could use this, right? That could use, this could yeah. be like... Maybe this is the big hint. I, I, like, I don't is, really care about player housing this is like the a role-play thing, but that Guild would be, that would actually, I would be interested in that. This is yeah. all, this is all preparation for Guild Wars 3, actually. Yeah. Yeah. That would be pretty hype. Uh, yeah. That, I, I think it's quite an exciting idea and i hope it works out well um for arena i think it could be good i think it will certainly engage um kind of the more casual player i think it's mostly aimed at that audience who are into that kind of thing like a bit of rp um a bit of rp element to it but also some stuff that you can kind of dip in and kind of almost have the game play itself for you that's what kind of what garrisons are a little bit and I'm kind of I mean, I, I think it's a great kind of... place. It opens up a whole big opportunity mm. of new rewards that can be yeah. added to the game, which could be like, you know, like that one prestige thing in there could be a rate reward, you know, one of the big prestige items in there. One of the big items could be like a farmable open world thing and could hence uh, enable them to actually put something that's worthwhile doing into a, a map like this. Mm. So, Are they going to scrap home node instances of Meanwhile... that? Or mix them or like what happens with those? Because they should be the same thing, right? Home and node instances. It, it, it's and almost going to be like V two. It's going like home instance V two almost. I imagine they're going to have well. a lot more. I think they're going to have a lot of tech on it, right? That will um, allow it to do more things than the home instance and make it much more customizable. Customizable. I think they'll go more along the like actual player housing route rather than home instance, which is just like you like dump some NPCs and gathering nodes here. You know? Yeah. I mean, they have to at the same time not devalue the home instance, right? They they don't want to make the home instance a big meme or something, and it can't be the same thing as well. So it has to have some kind of special use. But there's actually one more thing we haven't talked about, and Chat has actually requested this twice now, and that is a, a certain mobile app um, that mm. ArenaNet is cooperating with. Oh, th this thing! Oh my! To market their game, I it's what it comes with beautifully refreshing beverages yeah i think it, it is uh, bubble tea that this is yeah kung fu tea dude it, it's a bit kung of a fu fiesta tea. isn't it right isn't it a bit of a fiesta it's a bit buggy as i understand it right i heard i just i, I haven't actually tried it myself i just heard people that the actual app is actually terrible mm. and that it's not very good um that's yeah, weird i don't know what's wrong with it that's good that's good and I would kind of like to get a free alt account, okay? Free alt account, yeah. dude. That is easy daily reward chess, okay? It actually has some crazy rewards to it, right? That yeah. thing. Well, like, one guy like... got 32. He got 32 accounts out of this. I mean, that's, that's what, crazy. What, what the fuck? I mean, accounts. And also, I found, like, it was, like, a crazy... To me, personally, this is a crazy reward. The good was to uh, outfit. Yeah, I think this cool. is, like, one of the really special reward things that you that only very few players up until now had. Um, or like only like the oldest of veterans basically would still have this from like release events and stuff. And I personally, I was so psyched when I got one through Gamescom. I was like, wow, this is a great event for community game uh, events like this. And and that is a, I think that is a huge reward for those. Yeah, absolutely. It's like I feel like it's, it's almost. Fun. Do you think it's? Do you think it's a? Do you think it's a well? Um, it's a good reward. Do you think it's too much? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I. No. I don't. I. I think that um, bringing back that that's been people have wanted that back for ages, right? So you might as well do it with something like this. And you honestly, that could have been the anniversary almost, right? Um, yeah. But to to put it in, I guess in a promotion, maybe it's a bit excessive because it's like, oh, you downloaded an app. Good job, buddy. So I guess everyone can have it. But I suppose it was like that back then, right? Like it was very easy to obtain. So I don't know. There you go. That's just how it goes. And yeah, oh yeah, oh, George is bringing up something good. Deroya tweeted about this. Yeah, Twitch drops, Could this dude. Be a Twitch drop. Yeah, uh, I would love that so much. I, I think Twitch drops could be very good. Like Twitch drops carry games, dude. Pretty yeah. fucking hype. Yeah, I don't I'd be know down what with that. Is it's so, like you if you watch a, a Twitch stream, you can get items for that game yeah, in that game. stream. Yeah. Oh right right. And it would so it basically would encourage people to watch Twitch streams. So yeah. I mean, Amish they can get on that. They should get on that. They could easily promote their game really hard on Twitch, right? Just by doing that. <laughs> and we're not doing we're not doing so badly, okay, guys. You know, I'm just, let's just go let's just go over here, browse. Let's look at the games. Where are we? Oh God. Uh, no. Okay, <laughs> we're losing <laughs> to fucking Realm Royale, man. Holy shit. Actually, we are doing pretty terrible. <laughs> this isn't looking good. Oh no. We're losing to ESO. Are you kidding me? 
Oh, God, what a disaster. Okay, we're getting wrecked. Talking about other games real quick. Have you heard about the BDO drama, guys? Put the hashtag welcome to Guild Wars 2 back in your stream titles because BDO has had some massive... Uh, apparently, some item was added to the game that made it really pay to win or something. And now a lot of people are wasn't very it, depressed wasn't it already about already pretty pay to win, though? I mean, wasn't that what, But apparently, because... I don't know. I've, I've been hearing this meme all day, basically, that BDO did something that pisses off uh, pissed off a large amount of their population. So let's go. Hashtag uh, welcome to Guild Wars 2. Hashtag welcome BDO refugees. Yeah. Yeah. Join us. All right. But yeah, I think I think that'll do it, guys. So it's been quite a bumper tea time, actually. Good, good, goodness gracious. Nearly three hours. All that content, guys. Wow. Wow. I really don't even need to put raids in the game. We can just have tea time. But anyway, I hope they don't. You, I'm <laughs> not. I'm, if that's the case, I'm not. I'm not coming anymore. I'm, that would be. Wow. I'd be. I'd be yeah. so upset. If I have if to they, chop. If, if I they, have to choose, they gotta stop catering to the elitists. Yeah, they really do. Okay, they really do. But anyway, let's get into that two-hour world are. versus world discussion that we were talking about earlier. All right. So okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, but no, I think that'll do us, guys. Let's see. Let's commence the shilling, guys. Okay, hailing all the way from Team. USA, okay, quelling the uh, the recent uprising, okay? Doom himself. It is Doom, a.k.a. What up, what up? Naru. Tell us about what yourself, that? okay, and what you're up to these days. I'm a casual PvX player, um, hardcore PvPer. Mm -hmm. I stream PvP on Twitch. That's about it. It's all boys. There you go. Dunks fools. Dunks fools. Go click on those links, guys, to find people then. Moving over a little bit, it is the benchmark police competitor for Miss Guild Wars 2. Shortly, anyway, okay? <laughs> it is Rocker. Oh, it's wait, a hard competition, dude. It's a hard competition. Yeah, Deroira, dude. That's Deroira a serious competition. Beautiful. Yeah, uh, she, she is a, a, a beautiful, beautiful lady, okay? Like, no one's yeah. going to deny that. It, it's going to be real hard, dude. But, but yeah. Yeah, well, I'm a streamer. I'm a. I'm a, I'm a casual PvX player, but a hardcore PvE player, I guess, and, uh, yeah. Go check out my stream. I stream a lot of open world lately because there's not much else to stream <laughs> as a hardcore PvE player, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah. Come check us out. All right. There you go. And one of the most toxic players in the game, okay? Banned from Guild Wars 2. Banned no. from the partner program. Uh, okay. No. Oh, man. He hates oh, This guy yikes. hates Blaf so much. He hates. <laughs> he hates him, dude. He hates him. Uh, uh, no. It is Roy. Yikes. <sighs> yikes. Uh, I like how you updated my icon to the, uh, yeah. the Roygasm emote instead of the World vs. World Tower. It's pretty good. I That's like good. that, dude. It's pretty good, yeah. Are you, are you going to show a little bit? Gonna... Oh, um, <laughs> if you are interested, uh, you can um, buy an Amazon Prime account, link it to your Twitch account. You get Twitch Prime. You can sub the teapot for free once a month. Oh, well, <laughs> you yeah. ask him to shill and I'll, he shills. I'll take that. You. Yeah, okay. I don't mind that at all. And of course, you know, that segues perfectly into me. You like this stream, guys? Follow the stream. You like the, you like the stream even more? Subscribe as well. Follow me on Twitter as well. Do it. Come back and watch every single day. We do raids and stuff. World versus world soon. We're going. We're going back, boys. Okay, we're going back. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed the stream. Follow everyone here. Watch everyone here. Subscribe to everyone here. YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, everything, everything, all of that stuff. Uh, get in on that action, guys, and we'll uh, we'll see you guys later. We'll see you guys around. Okay. Thanks for watching. You guys have a I'm good day. Go. Go See you later. Yeah, we're gonna now. Roy's gonna turn a stream. I'm gonna raid Roy because that's how it's going. Okay, so we just gotta. Oh, now it's me. There's two me's now. But anyway, thanks for <laughs> watching, guys. See you later.